Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. All right. Hi, my name is Katie Fleckenstein. I'm the Public Information Officer for the City of Solvang, and very excited to see such a great turnout today. So thank you for taking time out of your busy holiday schedule to come by and talk about tourism. So I've heard from several of you saying, well, why, what exactly are we talking about today? Um, so I'd like to make some introductions and then go ahead and get started and talk about um, what we're going to cover in today's workshop. Because this is never, or at least hasn't been done in a very long time, as far as I'm aware, through the city, um, we're learning, we're learning what works, what doesn't, and so some of this information may seem like a lot, some of it may seem like, well, you know, I don't know what that has to do with residents, uh, but we are here because we want your input, and we want you to be able to speak about anything you would like to speak about as far as tourism is concerned. So if you have questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to let us know. Um, and then, of course, after the meeting, we'll try to leave a few minutes in between workshops so we can chat. And if there's something you didn't like, feel free to come up and let us know. Um, we're learning and we'll improve each and every time. So welcome. Uh, today's workshop, we're actually going to be talking about um, Solvang tourism, kind of where we're, where we're starting from moving forward. We're not here to talk about the past too much. We're really here to focus about the, the future and what lies ahead for Solvang as far as marketing Solvang to visitors is concerned and how that impacts you as a resident. Our first topic is going to be the future of Solvang tourism. So after each topic, we'll have a section, a break for public comments. We'll turn the lights back on and Marissa will be here with handheld mics and she'll go around and make sure that each of you have the opportunity to speak if you filled out a speaker slip. If you need a speaker slip, they're up here. Um, we will go through those speaker slips first and then if time allows, we'll go ahead and open it up to anybody who would like to speak. The second topic is solving events. So I'm sure a lot of you are here uh, because we've had several events in the last couple of months that were pretty large and we have Yule Fest coming up as well throughout December. So we'll talk a little bit about that, get your input on solving events. And then the third topic is making tourism work for you. So whether you're a big fan of tourists or not, uh, we wanna make sure that tourism works for residents in this community. The last topic is how you can get involved. Uh, we have a lot of fun ways you can actually get involved with tourism. Again, I'm Katie. Um, I'm here, I've, I've taken on this role kind of unexpectedly. Um, my background actually is in tourism. I've been the executive director of two different destination marketing organizations and have also worked in the uh, wine and beer industry as well as um, the arts. We also have Marissa here. Marissa, can you come say hi? So Marissa is here, she's brand new to the city. The city has hired her to assist with tourism marketing. So she's the one that's updating the SolvangUSA.com website, doing the SolvangUSA social media, and really she's here to answer questions as well. So she'll be assisting today, she'll have those mics, and will help us uh, ensure that we stick to the schedule and stay on time. We also have Anna, I think Anna's in the audience here, if you just wanna to wave to everybody, uh, who is handling Yule Fest PR right now, and she'll be beginning very soon doing Solvang PR, so public relations, working with the media, and getting the word out about all of the exciting things we're doing in Solvang. So she handles the tourism side, I handle the city side. And then we have uh, Liz, who is handling our e-marketing and blogs. So they were hired, um, by the city council, they said, you know, we need to get started. We need to make sure there's not a gap in tourism promotion. So we've hired them as contractors to get started and make sure there isn't that gap. But today we're here because we really want to go ahead and say, what is it that the community wants out of tourism? So before we take those next steps, this is important feedback for the city council. So moving forward, uh, just a brief history of, the, of Solvang tourism, just to kind of put it into perspective. Solvang's been around for a long time, and uh, in 1986, uh, the city officially began its marketing efforts. So to put that into perspective, it's been uh, several decades here. In 2014, Measure Z was approved to increase the TOT, or the transient occupancy tax, which we'll talk about later, so if you're not sure what TOT is, don't worry. And that went from 10% to 12%. Uh, and then the city nearly doubled their funding for tourism marketing in 2015. And in 2019, uh, the city is now here starting the public engagement process so that we can move forward together. 
So where are we now? So right now, we know a few things. We know we have this great team of marketing experts that are helping us ensure that there aren't gaps in tourism marketing. So we're looking at, okay, how do we expand our digital reach? So um, we're looking at our social media, making sure we can continue to expand upon that. Right now, the Solvang Tourism actually has about almost 30,000 followers on Facebook and collectively, a really nice uh, reach through Southern California uh, as well as the world. So we're looking to expand upon that. Once you get to high numbers, it's easier to keep growing. User-generated content. Um, if you do follow the city, city council meetings, we've had some exciting new initiatives. One of them is utilizing a software called CrowdRiff. And what that allows us to do is get the rights to user-generated content. That means any of you or visitors who come to Solvang, you post a pretty photo and we say, wow, you know, that's really good. Like, we couldn't have staged that. We can actually reach out to you in an autom automated way and say, hey, can we use these for our marketing materials? And most of the time, people say yes. And right now, if you go on Instagram, there are some beautiful photos of solving. And to pay for that in that kind of quantity would cost tens of thousands of dollars. So we've already been able to save a lot of money by using user-generated content. And through a very affordable program, we now have the rights to do so. So we have started the hashtag, the real solving. And you may laugh, I know I've heard a few people say, what does that mean, was it not real before? Um, no, the, the idea behind this is that we want to be authentic in our marketing, and we want people to actually show the real solving, not some staged photo of something that maybe you would never really see if you came to visit, but actually showing the real solving. So this hashtag also allows us to quickly and easily find those photos that people want us to save and share. Augmented reality. This is something that we're looking into, and the reason I mention it is because as we workshop through these ideas, we would love to hear what you think. If you hear an idea today and you say, wow, that sounds really interesting, uh, I would love for the city, city to explore that more, we would love to hear that. If you hear it and you say, oh, I don't know, that doesn't sound right for Solvang, we want to hear that as well. So augmented reality, um, how many people have heard of that, just sort of show of hands? Looks like a, a good number of you have. So augmented reality is a little bit different than virtual reality. Virtual reality is when you can kind of go into a world um, that's digital through goggles that you put on your head. For augmented reality, you can actually use your phone and you can use it to bring up information and pictures and video that aren't actually there. So for instance, if I walked around Solvang and I used my phone on a self-guided tour, I could actually learn all about Solvang's history or Danish culture or about the different businesses here as I'm going around with a special app using augmented reality. So there are a lot of new options through the digital age that we want to explore. And there are costs to it, but we also want to make sure that we're looking at this sustainably and making sure that those costs are offset either by sponsorships, advertising, or by uh, other uh, revenue generation ideas. So we're looking at uh, visitor guide kiosks, uh, the visitor center, visitor guide, visitor center kiosks, um, and more ideas. So we want to hear if you know of a new way to reach people that maybe involves technology, we want to hear about that as well. Coming soon, this should be very soon, we are actually going to be utilizing a text notification program through the city. And what's nice about um, looking at everything holistically is we can say, hey, what kind of platforms can we purchase that we can then use for tourism without spending another dollar? So you're utilizing them for both avenues. Obviously, we need to be able to reach out to everybody for a crisis communication, which is very important these days between you know, all of the different fires, planned power outages, things like that. But we can also use them for events and tourism as well. And there's some great innovative ways to do that. A lot of people prefer text because they get a lot of emails. Tourism revenue. Um, so the reason I bring this up, this may be a topic of discussion today. I want to make sure everybody understands what these acronyms are. So TOT, Transient Occupancy Tax. Um, it's a 12% tax on all lodging stays under 30 days. We've got sales tax. Sales tax is 7.75% sales tax on all purchases. 
And then we have the T-bid. So the Hotel Tourism Business Improvement District has a $2.50 per night fee on all hotel stays. And that goes to visit the San Diego Valley's uh, tourism promotion efforts. So this is where we're really starting to get into the meat of it for our residents. We want to look at what do you feel about tourism? How does it make you feel? Are you a huge fan and say, yes, I'm so thankful for tourism and the reven revenue it generates? Or you know what? I really can't stand the noise when we have events or the traffic. And looking at some of these problems and saying, OK, how do we address them? So some of the costs of tourism are infrastructure maintenance, you know, repairing the roads, uh, improving the restrooms, the parks. Uh, traffic, obviously, we've talked about as well, can be an issue. But there's a lot of benefits, too, for tourism. We know that there are a lot of businesses, especially restaurants, that would not be able to survive if they depended on residents alone. So because of tourism's coming in, they help those businesses survive year-round. And it also gives us more options, too. Instead of having a smaller number of restaurants, we have more. So that's definitely a benefit there. Um, also looking at the revenue that it generates for the city. A TOT is a huge uh, revenue generation for the city of Solvang. So things to consider as we're talking about tourism and how it affects the uh, community. Hopefully you've received in your water bill a survey. Um, we are hoping that you'll go online to fill it out uh, so that it automatically populates the data. But we have sent that out because we know not everybody can come tonight. And this gives you an opportunity to look at the different questions that we have on the various topics related to tourism. And you can decide which ones you want to answer. It is long. Don't feel like you need to answer every single question. We just want to hear from you if you would like to share. And so that is online. Um, that's a kind of an easier link to remember. But if you go to cityofsolvane.com, right there on the home page, you will see these links. So we have a resident survey, we have a business survey, and a visitor survey. So residents hopefully are filling it out. And I have to say I'm thrilled with the feedback so far. We've had over 200 responses in just, I think, a matter of a week, which is really quite significant for a survey. So please keep it going if you haven't filled it out. And it will be covering different questions than we're talking about today. Are there any questions just initially about kind of this overview of um, TOT and sales tax and all of this? Does everyone understand kind of why we're here today? OK, perfect. We'll keep going. So this is the first topic. So after each topic, we'll take a break. We'll find out um, what kind of comments you have and get your feedback. And this is being recorded right now, so we'll be able to look back at this. We'll be able to compile all of the data, and we'll take it to the city council on the 17th for a special meeting on tourism. So the future of solving tourism. Where are we headed? Where do you want us to go? So looking at Danish culture, this was a question that was asked in the survey, um, and it's something that we hear all of the time. Um, we hear everything from, oh, well, we want to focus on things other than Danish culture to a lot of, we need more Danish culture, because that's what Solvang is all about. It's a lot of Solvang's heritage. So that's something we do want to hear from you today. Do you want to see more Danish traditions um, incorporated into marketing and events? And we are known as the Danish capital of America right now. That's our slogan. And if you go to the city website, right there in the center, it says Danish capital of America. Smart cities. This has also been a topic that's been brought up quite a bit, uh, both by the city council as well as residents, looking at things like broadband and the internet of things, which basically means we can have our technology connect to other elements of technology so that everything becomes automated. One way we're doing that from the city side is we're going to be starting a 311 or a CRM, it's called platform, where all of you can go to the website and you can quickly type in what you're looking for and it will pop up and tell you, okay, here's the answer you're looking for. Um, if you want to report, uh, let's say, I don't know, an accident or uh, an animal on the road. You can go to the website and make that report, click on the map, and it tells you where to go. So starting to connect everybody in a very easy way so that communication is clear, there's accountability, and more efficiency as well. Instagrammable solving. For those of you that are on Instagram, um, 
What that means is if you're in a location with a really pretty background or maybe something that's really unique that hasn't um, that you don't see every day, that makes it Instagrammable. So a lot of folks who come up to Solvang from like Los Angeles, for instance, they see Solvang and they say, oh my gosh, this is so Instagrammable. I can go anywhere in Solvang and take a selfie and this is some great content for my social media pages. It's also great content for us, so we get to utilize that as well. All right, so I think we're ready for public con uh, comment on Solvang tourism and how it relates to you as a resident. Are there some speaker slips we could start out with? Okay, we have Diane Wittenbrock. Hi, I'm a Solvang resident. I've been here about 40 years. Um, Solvang is just a peaceful, tranquil town that we all enjoy. You know, we have relatives that come and visit and stuff. And I, some of the events, we have to be careful that the events are getting too overwhelming. Sorry. Yeah, do, uh, do you want to try the other mic? And you can, yeah, you, you, you can come up here as well. <laughs> Where's that word? <laughs> you can come, go for it. I don't want to be up here anyway. Um, anyway, um, I've lived here for a long time. I've seen a lot of events in town, and it just seems like they're becoming overwhelming. They're taking the solving charm out. And I would like to see it more in a, go to an area where they're not um, overwhelming the town and they're not inconveniencing, you know, us residents with um, noise, traffic, street closures, you know, minimal street closures. I live on Chalk Hill, so whenever there's a bike ride, everything's closed and you can't get through. Um, but usually it's just for three, four hours, so that's not too bad. Um, Noise level, I kind of, I don't want to ding the last event, but the noise level was really outrageous. I live three quarters of a mile from downtown, and when I went home at nine o'clock at night, I could hear it totally clear. I've never heard an event that loud. So I think we need to try to keep things, um, the noise level constraints, the, um, see, I lose my train of thought. Um, just, we need to, do events that don't overtake the town, don't overwhelm the town, things that enhance the town. Um, you know, smaller events that bring more people, but yet they can still enjoy the town, not things that overwhelm the town, so that's like the only thing. And residents can't get through, they can't bring people through. I totally can't talk in public. <laughs> I'm so frustrated right now. But do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's just that the events are getting too big and too overwhelming. It's taking the charm out. You know, people want to come to Solvang because it's Solvang, because it's peaceful, um, laid back, and I'd like to kind of see that charm stay that way because there's very few places that are like that. You go up and down the coast, and everything is becoming bigger um, and more commercial. And people like to come here because it's laid back. It's Mayberry. And I like to see it keep that charm. Thank you so much. Um, I realized I didn't talk about some guidelines we're going to have for public comments first. I meant to lay down some ground rules. You did a great job, by the way. Thank you. Um, we are going to stick to two minutes per comment, just in case, uh, because we are on such a, a, we have an hour today. Also, um, if somebody says something that you agree with, please say, I agree with that topic or that person. We want to make sure we're not repeating the same idea over and over because we really do want to hear every single idea and we want all the new ideas to keep flowing. So with that said, um, if, we, if we end up not having a lot of people who want to speak, then certainly we can expand upon the time that you have to speak. 
Um, next up, oh, and, and please stay where you are because we've got the cameras. This is being recorded. We want everyone at home to be able to watch you as well. No pressure. Um, next up, we have Denise Rose. I hope that works. Um, is this okay? All right. So uh, I have a lengthy letter, but I have it on file, so I won't spend a lot of time. Um, I am a Solvang homeowner, and, but I was born and raised in Santa Barbara. I have a lifetime of experience living in tourist towns, being raised in Santa Barbara, then I lived for three years in Yosemite. Um, I've also been a small business owner up in Northern California, employing up to eight people. Uh, one thing I, that I would like to say is I hope whatever we do with rebranding, Solvang keeps the overriding philosophy of balance uh, as the guiding philosophy to balance the needs of residents first, then businesses, and then tourists. Um, when I was, I have a, some experiences that I reflect back on and some successes and some not so good things. I worked for 20 years in the wine business at Corbell Champagne Cellars. It's the 12th largest wine production uh, company in the country. But it's also a great tourist draw in the Russian River community of Guerneville. For 50 years, it's maintained its huge success by focusing on one thing and one thing only in addition to the wine, its historical significance, its, its architecture, tour of the historical buildings, and it has maintained itself as one of the largest draws to the Russian River because it stayed focused on what people wanted. It's also benefited the whole Russian River community because it drew in a lot of resident, or a lot of tourism just on its own because they loved what they got at Corbell. Something that wasn't so successful was the 15 years I lived in the town of Healdsburg in Sonoma County when I was living and working there for 15 years. It's a town of 12,000. Uh, it's a very historical and charming town with a town square. But over the years, um, what happened in, in Healdsburg was not a very positive thing. They rebranded their town, however, they rebranded a small town, a charming small historical town, as a high-end luxury wine and dining attraction to the great detriment of the local residents and the housing market. There's constant turnover in their overpriced retail spaces, uh, insufficient parking, and no cohesive identity or character. The city council to this day is still trying to rectify the problems that were, that were created and undo the mistakes that, they were, that were, were established. It's not mine. Um, having lived over, all over the state of California, I purposely came back to Santa Barbara County and I purposely chose Solvang. We, we love Solvang. We love the tourist aspect. We also like the quiet, as the last speaker said, the quiet, charming, laid-back atmosphere for residents. The one thing I don't want to see is uh, I really I support marketing and tourism, and I was in the business. Uh, I want to make sure, though, that, that it's done right and that mistakes aren't made that can't be undone like I've seen in the past. Um, Just to give you a warning, that was the two-minute mark. Okay, I want to say one thing, really. You guys don't, I don't know that everybody here realizes what a success solving is. There, you are the envy of so many other towns in this state that wish they could be Solvang, that wish they had something that could attract tourists like Solvang does. So the Danish, I'm sorry, the Danish culture is the number one draw. You can build on that and enhance that by adding to it. We have wonderful museums, we have art galleries, well, we have wine and dining opportunities that can enhance what we have but not lose what we already have that's a success. So, Thank you. please don't stray too far and don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, as they say, and um, I think you can have some good results. Great. Thank you. And thank you for uh, submitting the letter. Okay. Thank you. We have a Rich Condit. Did I say that right? You, you can come up here. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Evening. Rich Condit. Um, I'm a resident of Solvang. Have been, was born in Santa Barbara, raised here since 1956 live in town, own a commercial building and commercial business here. And um, I guess the question I have, and I missed the preamble beforehand, I just got here a little late, I'm sorry about that. Didn't realize there were three different things going on tonight. Um, the concern I have, and I, and I like to look at things in a positive attitude as far as an outlook, as far as new things, new, new types of things that are gonna, you know, going to be tried in the town, but what scares me about what is going on right now is um, there seems to be a push for rebranding 
of solving. And I really don't think solving needs to be rebranded. I'm sorry. I might be a person that I just, I just don't think so. And part of my background is, I know I have two minutes, I'll tell you real quick. I, I speak from experience. To, I've been on commissions. I've been on the, par, uh, the Planning Commission, Parking Place Commission, SCVB, SVB president. Um, been involved with the town for a long time. And so this, is, this town has been built for years and years and years on the concept of a northern European Danish community. And it's, it's gotten to a point where I think we are, we are just breaking through and people are, like this lady said, people are coming here because Solvang is this beautiful little attraction and it's a real town. It's not just an attraction. It's a real town that people come to. They feel safe in when they, uh, tourists and residents alone, alike, feel safe in downtown <clears throat> when they're walking out at, at night, in the morning, whenever, and they enjoy the personal uh, interaction between shop owners, bakeries, people that actually work and live in this city or outside the city and have been here for a long time. So my feeling is the rebranding process, I don't know where it started or why it's being pushed so hard, I think the brand that we have is unique in itself. And I think we've done a very good job over a long period of time building this. And so that's my two cents for that. Okay, thank you. I am going to have to ask everybody not to clap just because then some people get applause and some don't. We don't want to hurt feelings, you know. Um, but I, but I do want to address that. I do want to address that comment real quick because um, that is a great comment, and I and I know that some people had some questions and concerns about that. Um, I had a radio interview, and I was very clear that some people um, I think were misunderstanding rebranding. So that is actually the next workshop, and we're going to talk about that in detail. We are not necessarily changing anything about the brand of Solvang. What we are hoping to look at is maybe the outdated city seal and the some of the outdated fonts and things like that. So we're looking at that, and then we're saying to you, hey, how what do you feel about um, branding in general? And right now we're hearing that most of you probably don't want to rebrand as far as changing what solving means. But what we do want, because you're so passionate about solving, is we want to take that workshop in, at 7.30, and we want to get all these great ideas about what does solving mean to you? What imagery does it evoke? So that when we're doing a brand book, which has not existed, there's been no consistency across all solving promotions, we can say, OK, here are the consistent colors, fonts, logos, messaging. And that's, again, part of what uh, marketing experts do, but we want your input so that it's real and it's authentic. So if you're, if you're passionate about that subject, um, then please stay for the 7.30 um, workshop. So hopefully that addressed the question that we're not here to say, hey, we're changing everything about solving. We're here to say, okay, what does it mean to you so that we can properly represent that in all of the visuals in marketing solving? So hopefully that addresses it. Did you get a speaker slip? Hi there, I'm Linda Palmer. I'm here representing myself and my father, Ken Palmer. Some of you old timers will remember City Council Ken. So it goes to the second generation now. Um, wanted to just echo everything I heard, which is the charm of the town, the safety of the town, and one of my big concerns was the noise recently and how overcrowded and concentrated things have gotten and how inconvenient things have gotten for the businesses and we ba I basically just don't come to town except Mondays and Tuesdays. If there's an event I go find something else to do. It's not for me. It's just not right. The other thing is who is in charge of the businesses that are coming into town? I have, ha I have lodged a formal complaint on behalf of the Elverhoy Museum which is my other life um, about those skin care vultures. Um, we've had many, 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 and I could go on, uh, complaints about their tactics. It is now lowering us to, there's a big expose about Kona, where there's seven of them in like a three block area. They prey on tourism. And we actually had a guest come to the Elverhoy who suffered damage by what they did to her. 
They put some whatever I, they I do put. want to refrain from just pointing out specific anyway, businesses. Anyway, so that was an official letter. We have documentation. Anyway, my concern is they're, they're a chain and there is another business in town, I won't name it, that is a chain or a franchise. Has that been lifted? Or are we, do we have control over who comes into town to continue the Danishness or the small town charm? Great, thank you so much. So we are starting to uh, get lower on time, so we're going to um, stick to that two minute rule. We've got one more um, here. Is it Jan or Jan? Jan, Jan, Jan perfect. We're in, I, you know, we're in uh, Danish capital of America. Uh, Jan Simonson. Good evening, my name is Jan Simonson. I've only lived here in town for the last four years, but my family has been in the valley since the 1890s, and I've spent a good portion of my life enjoying the valley. The one issue that I want to address, we need this for the oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, most, the issue that I felt most epitomized what I'm afraid might be happening to Solvang is these little cars, Jeepsters or whatever they are. To me, that is a sign of what we should try to avoid. It adds congestion, and it seems to me that we want Solvang to be a place where people relax and walk, and I'm sure it seems that the merchants would rather have you on the sidewalk than around on the streets. That's the kind of activity that I would hate to see take over here in Solvang, because to me it just seems like that's the opposite of what Solvang should be, and I hope that we don't go down that road. And I've got plenty more I could say, but... Thank you so much. All right, so we're going to move to the next topic. Thank you, everybody, for speaking. Let's get this back up here. Perfect, thank you. All right, Solvine events. I know this is going to be a really big one, so I have to remind you that please, when you speak, to just say I agree with and make it really short. And we will make note, we are compiling all of this, so we will make note that you agree with what somebody else says. But we do have th two, three more topics to cover tonight and we have until 7.30, so I just wanna make sure we stay on target. Solving events, before we talk about this, I just want to uh, clarify a few things. So we've got city hosted events. These are events that are actually paid for by the city and these are events such as Yule Fest. Um, so recently, if you've uh, attended or watched the city council meetings, you saw that the city hired a contractor to manage and produce this event. Then we have city sponsored events. These are when a for-profit or non-profit comes to the council and says, hey, we're doing this event. We really need your help. We would like to uh, get a grant to improve our event and do some marketing to bring people to Solvang. So this is when the city council votes and says, yay or nay, uh, we will or will not uh, sponsor your event. The goal moving forward is financial sustainability for all events. So you may have noticed in the last few council meetings that when someone comes to do an event or when the city decides to host an event, they're looking at making sure that with each year, they're moving more and more towards an event that pays for itself so that the city doesn't have to fund it each year. You'll notice that for Solvang Stomp, for instance, um, Visit SYV actually ended up managing that event. Uh, it was somewhat last minute, and they cut a check back for almost the entire amount that the city gave them. Um, I think it was about a little over 7,000 left that the city spent, and um, ultimately that's a very cheap way to do a lot of advertising and PR and also increase the TOT and sales tax. So that's looking at examples like that, that is the ultimate goal. So I have seen a lot online, and unfortunately due to uh, PRA restrictions, I don't comment on public forums that can't be archived. So if you're always wondering, why isn't the city saying anything, that's why. Um, but I have seen a lot on the local Facebook Facebook chat rooms, people saying, well, oh, they're spending all this money. But um, I want to make sure today when we're talking that everyone understands that some events are actually paying for themselves already. Other events, that's the goal. And then some events are not. And that's something that the city council really wants to look at moving forward. So hopefully something that um, everyone can think about when you're talking about the types of events that you want here, if you want events here. That's it. Um, we're going to go ahead and open this up. Are there any speaker slips? 
Okay, Elizabeth Breen. And everyone, you can just stay where you are just because of time. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll get you where you so are. So I'm a 25 plus year resident of the Valley, but I now live in the TRC. We moved downtown about six months ago. So I live on Alisal Road, right across the street from the Outlet Mall. I'm in the heart of downtown. Walk my dogs every day, interact with people all day long, tourists, all kinds of people. Um, City events, to me, the biggest problem I have has nothing to do with noise or the type of event. You know, I can choose to go or not go to those events. What I don't understand is the city funding those events when we need a wastewater treatment plant. That's where they lose me. It seems like everybody can come now and say, we need money for this bike ride on a weekend when the hotels were already busy. You cannot show me that those people that are coming to the bike ride are spending money in the shops. If you talk to the shop owners, they will tell you, not so much. For years, I worked at the Royal Scandinavian. We did the score bike rides. A lot of vendors, a lot of feedback was that those people came in, rode their bike, and left town again. I was here one of the nights of the carnival. I had to leave town the next night. It was like a ghost town. There were not people downtown. That was I think that was the Thursday night, and the thing started on Friday. Or maybe it started Thursday, I don't remember. But there were not people going to those events. There were not people on the streets. If you can't quantify that you increased bed tax or you increased sales revenue, then why is the city handing over this money? I didn't understand the stomp. There was not time to market it properly. The previous year, the budget that was provided was a projected expense, the previous year's expense, and no income numbers at all. So based on a, a budget that showed no income numbers, the city said, yeah, we'll fund the stomp. I've never seen a budget like that. I prepare budgets all day long. They include income and expenses, usually. So I just have a problem with the city spending money on these events and these Hail Mary things. And everybody comes, the rodeo guy came. Every city council meeting, somebody comes and says, I'm putting on an event. It's like, when do we stop funding these events? If they can't fund themselves, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be spending the money that way. We need a wastewater treatment plant and infrastructure and parks and recreation and maintenance staff. And I could go on, but I won't. Thank you. And I, I actually, I do want to clarify, the city did have the revenue projections for Stomp. They weren't provided in the public information at all. Yeah, provided. The previous year's revenue was not in the information that was in the public. Document. In the agenda packet. Um, Ian, we have Ian Jacobson. Thank you very much. Uh, my wife and I are new residents here. We've been here just about two years. We chose Solvang because we had gone on some trips with Linda Johansson and met some really fine people through that here in Solvang. Uh, and we kept getting uh, three or four times a week emails from Tracy and the Chamber of Commerce talking about all the events that were going on in Solvang. And we said, gee, you know, they sound like a lot of fun. And so, uh, but they're not big events or anything of that sort. It sounded like the sort of thing that you'd expect to have in a little small town that's fun. Um, my grandparents are buried up in uh, Chalk Hill. My, grand, my parents uh, weren't buried. They were cremated, and, but their headstones are there. I went to Adderdag in 1946 as a summer camp at that point, so I have some history back in Solvang. And we just decided that this was going to be a fun place in which to retire. And I would like to see Solvang stay that way and maintain its Danishness because that's what makes this a special place. And also the friendliness. When we told our friends that we were moving here, everyone had a really good image of Solvang. They said, wow, that's a really neat place. And we've been on some cruises since then, and as we've traveled around the world, and people say, where are you from? We say, well, we're from Solvang, California. You may not have heard of it. Oh, yes, we have, and that's a marvelous place. And so we're doing something right in terms of our branding. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Last call? OK. OK, so here I am again. I'm a resident here, uh, and I'm sorry about missing the the, uh, the first one. I, I guess I spoke out of turn on the branding issue. So, um, the the events and and things in the town that go on, I, I understand 
why we put events on, why we have to do things like that, because we have to generate income for the town also. Um, and I think that's important. Um, I think it's the events that we have to pick and choose on what is best for solving and its image. And so all of those things contribute to TOT, bed tax revenue, sales tax revenue, happy people coming and visiting and happy people coming back and visiting. And you're right, there's a lot of places you go in this world and they ask you where you're from and you say Solvang, California, and they know it. And they, they have a very positive uh, reaction to it. I've never had someone say, oh, you're from that dirty little town. So when I travel around, I talk to people and I look at people and I look at how much, I look at my bills, I see how much they charge for TOT, things like that. And so all those things combine to make this a successful town. And throughout the past, there's been little skirmishes, but for the most part, residents of this town and business owners of this town have gotten, have gotten along very well. And they both understand how balance is a necessary item. It's not residences over businesses, businesses over residences. They both provide a function in this town that's a positive function. So my, again, I like the town, I like the way it is. Yeah, you, know, you, can, te you can tweak it a little bit, but they're mostly what's been done over a period of time, to me, has been positive and very good. And it's, and it's taken a long time to work this town to where it is at this present time. It started a long time ago. So there's my input, thanks. Thank you. I'm Gay Infante, and like Ian and Bonnie, my husband and I decided to move here seven years ago it's because it's a wonderful place. And I've lived in Southern California most of my life, and I have visited Solvang as a child. And uh, on our first anniversary, and ever since, Mark and I have come up here multiple times every year to Solvang. Um, stayed at Al Asal Ranch and the Peterson Inn before it was what it is now, Lansby, and um, also elsewhere in the valley. We love the valley, and we particularly love Solving and all its wonderful, friendly people. So we'd like to see Solving stay as a small Danish community, Danish culture community, and a uh, peaceful and wonderful and friendly place to live where we can get to know all the people in town and get involved in the government, and et cetera. Um, as far as the events go, which you want us to talk about right now, um, I hope we don't have another carnival here. I thought that was a horrible, not in the, in the nature of solving event. Um, I don't think it was a big popular deal as the feedback we've seen from a few of the people that were probably prompted by the city council who wanted that to happen. Um, honestly, we had some other events going on uh, <clears throat> that weekend and the weekend before, it interfered with the Arts Connection opening, it interfered with the Queen of Arts at the Elverhoy. Um, it's just not great because it overtakes our infrastructure. And I agree with Elizabeth, we need to improve our infrastructure, but if we have as many people as we had for those two events, it overwhelms the infrastructure, it overcrowds everything, and honestly, it's gonna wear down the roads and all the things, that we're collecting all this extra money, we're gonna have to fix. So it's like, you know, we have to think about the balance, as somebody said, I really agree with that, and I think we wanna keep this a good place to live. Thank Great. you. Great, thank you so much. Okay, a couple more comments. Um, remember, if you agree with somebody else, just say, I agree, because we do have two more topics to cover tonight. Hi, I'm Greg Milliken. We, my wife and I moved here three and a half years ago, similarly, after having visited for decades to prepare for retirement. Uh, we're up on Skit Mesa, and um, this Saturday morning is one of the best Christmas parades in the country. The uh, I think it's this Saturday morning, right? The annual. Uh, now, we moved here from Pasadena and lived about four or five blocks from the Tournament of Roses Parade, and we're there every year for 25 years. It's a wonderful event, close friends involved in producing it, and it's as appropriate for the city of Pasadena and its worldwide brand as for me, the, the Yule Fest Parade here in Solvang is, which is a wonderful occasion. Go out and sit on the curb and visit with neighbors and friends and get the candy from the kids. 
it's the kind of thing that makes this be a place for a couple of hours on its occasion to fit with the rest of the things that we're hearing about what makes this city a place of welcome wherever you go in the world it's friendly because people are welcomed regardless of where they've come from and I think that's pretty important. Thank you so much. Do you mind passing it over to? Good evening, everybody. My name is Hank Homburg. I live here in Solvang also. Um, I'm the contrast to the persons or people who were anti-Fall uh, Fest. Um, I thought it was amazing. I, I've never seen so many kids have a great time in this town. And I know there's some business people here, and I, I honestly wish you business people with all the money would open up like a Lego store or something or a Lego playroom or something for kids because there's absolutely nothing to do for kids here. And uh, that carnival was absolutely amazing. And I was here Saturday and uh, participated in the, the beer and wine garden with some friends from Santa Barbara and also from Lompoc. And uh, they, were, they were blown away by how well run it was um, and then we came back after we went to dinner, we went out to dinner. Um, we came back at night just to see all the carnival rides all lit up and to see the lights and it was packed. It was, there was lines around every carnival ride that we saw. So Saturday was amazing. Uh, Sunday, um, I think it went a little long. I think it went into like 10 o'clock at night. It probably could have got shut down at six, but all that being said, um, I walked downtown early Monday morning. I didn't see one cigarette butt, one piece of paper. Um, I didn't even know the carnival was here. I mean, all the rides were gone. The carnival guys were great. Um, you know, it wasn't that, that carny uh, attitude is what I saw, if that makes any sense. But anyway, again, I thought it was a huge success. Um, the bands were fantastic. I uh, gave a lot of local kids an opportunity to show their their abilities and stuff. And I, I just thought it was great. It was a great family event for people in the valley and tourists. So um, I'm sorry if anybody was ill affected, but I hope it comes back again. So that's all I got to say. Oh, and one thing also, um, as far as keeping the Danish culture and all that, we had Danish students here at City Council a couple months ago. And one thing they said is that our town is really bland. Uh, the real Danish Copenhagen, and raise your hand if you've ever been to Copenhagen, um, you know how brightly painted all the all the buildings are and stuff, and there's a lot of color, and we don't have that here. So, sorry, I have to ask you to wrap it up. We've, we've got to move on to the next topics. We'll come back at the end, and we'll we'll let everyone talk who hasn't had a chance to talk uh, time allowed. So, next topic. Making tourism work for you. So shopping local. Um, I oftentimes hear people say, oh, this is my favorite store, um, and then they go out of business in the next month. Uh, vice versa, sometimes I hear people complain about other stores and say, oh, you know, I'm not a fan of that store for whatever reason. Your money will end up uh, affecting who stays and who goes. So that is something that in the holiday season, we oftentimes shop online, something to consider. You can definitely shop local and that will make a difference. Speak up. So you guys are here. That's the first step, coming to the, uh, the meetings. But you can also email council at cityofsolving.com. And to address an earlier comment, um, we are as unbiased as we can possibly be when uh, taking all of the feedback and putting it together for the council. As far as I'm aware, I don't believe that's actually been done before. So this is new, but we're utilizing every channel we can to combine information. And soon with that new CRM platform I mentioned, it should be more automated, which will be great. So if you email that email address, that will all be compiled so we get actual data. Because uh, in a town like this, you know, it can be two people who believe strongly in something. If they're the loudest, that's what everybody hears. So we want accurate data. And you coming here is the first step and really appreciate you taking the time today. The other thing you can do is show up at the city council meetings if you feel strongly about a certain topic or want to talk about tourism. The second and fourth Monday of each month and uh, public engagement workshops. We hope to be doing more of these. As I mentioned earlier, we're, we're learning, we're starting this, seeing how it works with solving each city is different, and we'll be able to uh, improve these each time. 
stay informed. Follow us on social media. So right now, I want to say we just hit the 500 mark on Facebook. Uh, there's about 5,000 residents here. Granted, a lot of them are children, um, but we want to make sure that a lot of you are utilizing avenues such as social media because that's pretty real time. We post information as we get it. We share articles that are relevant to city news, and that's going to be only city news. So if it's related to tourism, it's going to be about the city council or an ordinance or something like that. If you want tourism news, that's Solvang USA. And visiting the new communications department page on the city of Solvang.com. Um, after each city council meeting, I do post a summary of the city council meeting, kind of just a quick, until the minutes are available, here's a, a way that you can find out what happened. Um, a lot of you probably don't have time to watch the entire, some of those meetings are very long. So you can actually go to the Department of Communications page and look at that summary to see what's happening at the city council meetings. You can also go there for special reports um, and then my PIO verbal reports that I do the PowerPoints on, I'll post those on that page as well. So if you can't make it to a meeting, it's a good way to stay updated. And because I talk about tourism a lot, it's a good place to go. Um, so does anyone want to comment real quick on this topic about how you can make tourism work for you? No? Okay, we're going to move forward then. <laughs> All right, getting involved. So how can you get involved with tourism? That might be a weird question to ask when you say, well, I'm a resident, I live here. But there are some fun ways that you can get involved. So as we collect this data and pass it along to the city council, again, we want to be unbiased and accurate. But that means the more people that respond, the more accurate it will be. So if you can help us, you can actually share that URL, which is also on the homepage of the city of, city of solvang.com. You can share that with all of your friends. Email it to them, um, mail it to them, text it to them, or post on your social media pages. And that will help us out a lot. We want to get visitor feedback in addition to resident feedback. And then, of course, if you are a business or have friends that are business owners, uh, perhaps you can ask them, hey, have you filled out that business survey yet? And if not, uh, that information is also available at cityofsolvane.com. The second one I'm excited about, um, some of you may enjoy sh telling friends, hey, I found this new place in Solvang, or oh my gosh, I went to this restaurant, restaurant we always go to, but did you know they have a secret menu? So all of those kind of insider tips, we want to share those in our marketing as part of our real authentic Solvang. Granted, we do not want to give away the super secrets that might affect uh, resident life, but we do want to be able to share things that we're proud of about Solvang. So if you have tips, um, whether it be, hey, I found a new allergy-friendly restaurant that fits my allergy needs, or, um, you know, again, that secret menu idea, or a place to go with kids that maybe other people haven't thought about. We want to hear from you, and we would love to share that. So next time you're at a place having a great time in Solvang, snap a picture, hashtag it the real Solvang, or email it over to us at the city, and uh, we will get that out there. So we appreciate your involvement there. And again, lastly but not least, please tag your pictures on social media, hashtag the real Solvang. That will allow us to find them very easily, and we want to see what you see. So we want to see it from a resident's point of view and, and get to know all of the great things about solving so we can share it with others. All right. Anyone on that topic? The topic's on how to get involved. Okay, we have a few minutes left. I think we have, yes, we can take the next few minutes to do general comments again. We'll go back. I know there were a few people that wanted to speak. Please state your name as well if we don't have a speaker slip so we... Uh, uh, hi, my name is Jamie Baker. Um, I'm a resident and a business owner, and um, I wanted to just comment on the, the, the Family Fest. And I own a business. I was here. I didn't earn a single dime during that fest and couldn't be happier um, because I walked those streets and I saw a lot of smiling kids. And my business is a family-friendly, kid-oriented business, and there was not a kid in my door. But I couldn't have been happier because I saw for four days kids in the area having a blast. Um, when I first came to Solvang in 79, um, I walked these streets and it was magical. And those moments are really special. And it's really nice when you, when you feel that here and kind of put aside what might be uh, 
a bad day for you because it's still a magical place. And that's all I need to say. Thank you, Jamie. Anybody else? A couple more back there. Thank you. My name is Mark Infanti. I'm a resident here in Solvang. Just a quick question. Why the events? What is the purpose? This city makes 50% of its income off of the TOT, and I kept hearing you say about TOT and all this kind of stuff. What's your objective? Increase the TOT? Decrease it? More dependent upon it? I have never heard why there's a rebranding, why we want all these events that we're paying for and not making money off of, as was stated. So I don't understand all of the background of what, this, what started this. Sure. So uh, we do want to increase the TOT because it is a revenue generated generator for the city. And that is direct money for the city of Solvang. And then to answer your other question, too, we are going to talk about rebranding at the next workshop. We are not definitely rebranding. The, the goal of these public workshops is to have you come here, tell us what you want. Do you want rebranding? Do you not? Do you want to stick with the same logo? Do you not? All of those questions, and that's what that workshop is for. So I do want to be clear. There is no set rebranding currently. We are going to talk about that in the next hour. We will then take all of that information, and we will take it back to the City Council for discussion on September on uh, December 17th, excuse me, at 6.30 p.m. Good evening. My name is Eric Hutchins. I've lived here for eight years. I moved here uh, for the promise of a job, and so I work here as well. Um, I have to say, uh, I came in to talk about one thing, but I'm a little overwhelmed, so I'll, I'll mention just a couple things very quickly. First of all, I'm confused about the language that's being used. Uh, rebranding is rebranding, except it's not rebranding. It's really not rebranding. So which, what rebranding is different than maintaining a brand. Those are two different ideas. So that's one of my confusions. Another thing is this is called a workshop. Uh, this is not like any workshop I've ever been to. And I've been to dozens of workshops across many different industries. So again, I'm confused. So let's lay that aside for a moment. Tourism is typically not something that people yearn for in a democratic way. There's typically no mass movement to create more tourism. It's to generate money. And the question is, how do you, how do you mitigate the downside of tourism? <laughs> okay. So tourism can be the best thing in the world for a community, or it can be the worst thing in the world for a community. It can destroy what community is there and replace it with like a facade of a community. So it seems to me it's not like should we have events or not, it's how do we manage the events to support the brand that's already well established, mitigate the downside, and make everybody happy. Okay, that, and finally, I think that there's a way to go about managing this. One is to talk about events that support your brand, because they're obviously Danish, et cetera. How to deal with events that don't support your brand, but still seem to have some positive impact on the community. And then third, how to keep events from, from being at the expense of certain people, certain members of the community, or certain businesses in the community in support of others. In other words, keeping a level playing field, particularly in the business community. And um, I'll stop there. Thank you so much. Um, so thank you. I would love to hear actually your feedback on the workshops. Um, and perhaps workshop isn't the best term. Public engagement session maybe would have been a better title for that. And again, for the rebranding, we're here to talk about whether or not we should rebrand. So it is a rebranding discussion. But that is the topic for the next workshop. So we are actually out of time. But I do encourage you to take advantage. And actually, real quick, we've got these surveys online. We have the special city council meeting, which you are welcome to come to and speak at. That's uh, December 17th here at 6.30. And uh, we will be talking about whether or not to do requests for proposals for rebranding, marketing, and tourism uh, services. So that's why we're here to get feedback on that. And then we'll take that to the council. They'll be discussing that. You can also come and speak to the council about that topic. In the meantime, if you cannot attend, council at cityofsolvang.com is a great way to get across um, your feedback.
as well. So we want to hear from you. So thank you so much for attending today. And we do have a few minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to come up. Otherwise, we'll be getting started on the rebranding workshops shortly. Thank you.
your slip. Oh, do you have the agendas here? Do you have the agendas for this one? Okay, great. You're welcome to fill out a speaker slip. Um, we're giving first rights to people who fill out a speaker slip to speak today, and then if we have time, we'll go around and uh, let additional people join. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Can I ask everyone to turn off your cell phones? All right. Thank you for coming today, everybody. Um, my name is Katie Fleckenstein. If you weren't here previously, I'm the Public Information Officer for the City of Solvang. And um, we will talk a lot about why we're here, ease any concerns you might have about steps moving forward, because you are now part of the process. And uh, I would think it's probably better to have a voice than not, but this is brand new. So please, you know, bear through the growing pains. Um, if you do follow the city council meetings, um, you may remember there was a meeting, I think two meetings ago, um, when the city council decided whether or not to move forward with a public engagement process. And in that meeting, we said, well, we can either take a few months to do the public engagement process and then not have decisions moving forward on tourism and tourism marketing, or we can speed up the process. It means we won't have as much time to do it, but at least we'll know that the community gets a voice and gets to be heard regarding tourism. So we will have more time for any future workshops to prepare. Um, but this is a, a good starting place to kind of bring everybody in here and talk about it. And this one, um, I heard in the last previous session that it wasn't really like a workshop uh, because it was based on topic and then having public comment. This is also based on topic and public comment, but we are going to be workshopping a little bit more. Uh, so Marissa, I'm gonna ask that you um, try both mics today for this workshop, and we're going to try to move fast and getting everybody to be able to talk. Um, we have to get this on the recording, so the mics do help, uh, but when we get to the whiteboard over here, we will try to um, let people you know, raise their hand and call out some ideas as well. So can I get a show of hands really quickly about who, he, who here just arrived and wasn't part of the first workshop? <coughs> okay, just a few of you. So most of you have heard my spiel. I'll try not to be too repetitive here. Today, we're going to talk about what does rebranding mean. Um, I did have someone say to me, well, why would you ask residents about branding? They're not experts. They don't know anything about branding necessarily. But when you're talking about the image that a location evokes or that is the representation of a location in marketing materials, you want to make sure that the people who live here support that, that message and that brand and the look of all of those marketing materials as well. Without that support, it's harder to get people to utilize that brand and to have consistency across the board. So we'll talk more about that. We're going to have topic one, uh, brand feedback. So we're going to look at our current branding and get your feedback. Do you like it? Do you love it? Would you like to see it updated? Whoops, excuse me. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Solvang 2.0. What's ahead for the image and brand of Solvang? And then topic three, what does Solvang mean to you? This is really important. I'd like to try to save most of the time for that section. So we'll get to the drawing board and we'll come up with some great feedback. That way, when we go to the city council and we bring all of that information to the city council, if they decide to go to RFP, which means request for proposal, they'll be getting contractors to come and say, hey, we would love to do your redesign for all of your marketing materials. And they will have something to work with from the community. So it won't just be five people sitting up here telling a contractor what to do, or one staff member telling a contractor, here's what we want out of our branding. We'll actually have feedback from you to bring to um, this individual or firm. And then next steps, what's involved with this whole um, rebranding or not rebranding process, because right now we're here to talk about whether or not we want to rebrand. <coughs> what we do know is that we do need a brand guide. So we know we need to have some more consistency across the board. Introductions, again, I'm Katie. I'm the PIO for the city of Solvang. And um, because of all of the changes in Solvang in the last few months, I've also been spearheading tourism solutions. Uh, so that is not part of the uh, PIO function necessarily, but is uh, something I've been working on as well. And I've been in uh, tourism for uh, most of my career. And we've got Marissa over here. Marissa, say hi to everybody. 
She'll be helping us out here. She does have her phone uh, with a timer on it. So when it's time for public comment, we because we only have an hour for the workshop, everyone's limited to two minutes. And we're going to be pretty strict about that because we have a lot to cover. And we do ask if you want to say something that the person before you or sometime today said, please just say, I agree with the comment about and we will make note of that. We are compiling all of the data. What we don't want is to take away time from the idea sessions and making sure that we have something tangible so that if the city council says, yes, we want to move forward with a new logo, for instance, we have some great feedback from you. Oh, and then we also have Anna for um, uh, Ferguson Sparks, who's doing our PR for Yule Fest and for um, solving, and Liz, who does the e-marketing and blogs. So what does rebranding mean? So rebranding can mean a lot of things. It can mean a total overhaul of your brand identity. So what does solving mean? What sounds scary, I know to a lot of you, I've already heard in the prior workshop is, well, wait a minute, are you saying you're going to change the identity of solving? And that's what we're here to talk about. Um, we're, we're here to talk about, well, what is the brand identity of solving? And how are we getting that message out there through our marketing materials? Because there is a lot of different messaging, I will tell you that. And we'll see that in the brand section when we look at our current brand. So does solving need to rebrand? In your opinion, uh, does it need to update new branding elements in their marketing materials? Those are two different things, brand identity and brand elements. You could believe that the brand identity is perfect as it is, but say, oh, okay, but our graphic elements need updating. Or you could say, you know what, it needs a full overhaul. Guidance. The Solving City Council does want your input. Um, we are here. We're not wasting time just talking into thin air. We are here and we're recording this because we want to bring this to the special city council meeting on December 17th so the council has feedback from the community. This is very important. And we're obviously going to be way more successful with your support. Brand elements. So should the city council decide to move forward with updating graphic elements and creating a brand guidebook, then they would want to take your feedback and bring that to those um, folks that are bidding on the proposal, as well as the survey results. So branding 101, what is a brand? It's a name, a term, a design, a symbol, or any feature that identifies a good or service, or in our case, a lo location and how it makes it different from other locations in our case. Brand elements. Today when we talk about brand elements, we're talking about logos, fonts, colors, images, graphics, slogans, and that kind of a thing. If you have any questions today about that, please ask, but I want to make sure that when we're talking today, we, we use kind of the same terminology so we know what each other is saying. Brand standards. So brand standards, the, currently there is not a brand guidebook for solving in the city of Solvang, nor on the tourism side. And right now we have very different branding elements for the city versus the tourism side. So we're also here to talk about that today. Do you like the fact that there's different elements? Do you want it all to be the same thing for residents uh, as well as for visitors? Brand consistency, again, making sure that your image is consistent across all platforms. So that is why we're here today. So a brand guide oftentimes is a book, a big PDF that has all of your logos, your colors, your fonts, and it's going to tell other people who use your logos how to use it and what not to do. Um, so this is extremely helpful and the only way to ensure that a brand is consistent across the board. So for instance, if today you all say, you know, we do not want anything to change at all, and the city council says, you know what, we agree, we're, gonna do, we're not going to do anything moving forward, we still need a brand book because we still need a document that says, here's our brand and here's how to use it. Any questions just about the terminology? Okay, great, we're gonna move forward. Brand feedback. So this is the part where I'm excited about. Uh, the next few topics, we're gonna get feedback directly on you. What do you like and not like? So currently, this is the city seal of Solvang, and this is the city letterhead. I believe there is a couple versions possibly floating around. Uh, I came on board August 1st, and um, it was very difficult to, to find all of the different branding elements for the city of Solvang, uh, but these seem to be the two main ones here. 
So that's our currency seal. There's a, just for reference, kind of see maybe how it's changed over the years. For those of you who have lived here a very long time, you've probably seen multiple iterations. I might even be missing some here, but here are some older versions of the city seal. And in case you don't know, that is uh, the a mermaid in the center. Danish capital of America, if you go to the city website, you'll notice that's on the home page. That is our city slogan. It's used a lot in uh, the tourism marketing materials as well. Oh, I apologize for that one. Um, okay, and then we've got the Solvang um, logo, which right now, because the Conference of Visitors Bureau is not fulfilling the tourism um, marketing functions, we will be rebranding that either way. And that's part of this discussion is saying, well, do we want to do the same brand uh, elements for the city and the uh, city residents and visitors, or do we want to separate that for some reason? Welcome to Solvang. Um, I also wanted to point out our imagery is everywhere. So Solvang's in signs, there's a visitor center, there's a sign when you enter the town. I believe there's another one over by Jim's service uh, station there. And you do see this brand a lot of different places. While we can't control what's on t-shirts at individual stores, we can look at the signage, the websites, the social media, all of that and make sure it's consistent. We also want to talk about similar destinations. You know, who do you uh, think that Solvang is the most like? Who are our competitors, so to speak? So if we're doing tours and marketing and we want to bring more people here, or maybe we just want to bring people who come here and spend a lot of money but don't make a lot of noise and cause a lot of traffic, then, uh, you know, who are those people and where are those other competitors? I put a picture of Leavenworth here, um, which is in Washington. Hopefully I'm saying that right. It's, uh, I believe, a German town up there. And I know my, my uh, parents took my kids there for a trip and said it had that really homely feel, a lot like Solvang. And these are important topics to discuss so that if you do end up doing a rebranding, you have those conversations. Who are your competitors? Who are you similar to? It also allows you to see what other people are doing. Maybe you like or, or don't like what they're doing. All right, so this part, what do you like, not like? I'm going to actually go back real quick. I'm going to... I'm going to stick to actually this one just for our conversation. Um, but now's a good time for public comment. Do we have any speaker slips on this? So we're going to stick to this topic right now about the current graphic elements for the brand of Solvang. We have Eric Cutchins. Oh, save this for the next one? Okay, we will, absolutely. Anybody want to speak on this? This is, this is the, the meaty part. We want to hear, do you like, not like? Uh, Marissa can pass the, the mic. Thank you. What do you want to see that's different? Um, hi, I'm Susan Williams, and I'm a resident of Solvang and a business owner. Um, I'm not a fan of the mermaid that's up there behind the city council, so to, that picture so much. But, you know, this is, it's been here. This, this is the Little Mermaid has been the seal. I don't personally think we need to reinvent things right now. Maybe there's some other priorities. Um, and I actually like having the tourism logo be different than the cities. Oh, and I've been to Leavenworth, Washington, which was actually built by people from Solvang. Uh, they came here, it's a Bavarian village. And when they were, um, the railroad stopped coming there because they were a logging town and the, their industry stopped, they decided they needed to do something to keep their town going and they came to Solvang and Solvang went up there and helped them build the town. And they are a lot more strict with their signage and the fact that you have to have an old world style graphic on everything, including the Shell Station and Wells Fargo. That's very helpful, thank you, Susan. I used to have to pass out, not have to, but uh, passed out business cards as a city a city council member. And I've always felt that my business card was not as bright as other business cards from other towns in the state. And, and uh, this right-hand uh, image uh, kind of represents in my mind what that business card looked like. And it just needed a little something to make it snap. Uh, and maybe the, the city letterhead could use a little something to make it snap. 
But as far as the image of the, of the mermaid is concerned, it's not just a mermaid. It's the mermaid from Hans Christian Andersen, and it's a very important image to the city of Solving and also to the nation of Denmark. So I think that uh, uh, to disturb that image would be something we shouldn't do. Thank you, Jim. Um, just a note, we are going to talk about imagery and icons later as well. Um, so we really want to hear everybody's ideas on that. Um, and also, the other thing I did want to point out is if you are in favor of keeping it, you can still keep a logo and refresh it so that it has slight changes that are so small that it's, it's hard to explain, but it just looks a little bit more current, but it could be the exact same logo, for instance. So just to throw that out there, kind of throwing all ideas out there, see what, what everybody wants. Are there any other comments on this portion? Hi. I just think uh, finding a brand or choosing a brand and using it and being consistent. And uh, so pe when people see uh, the solving logo, they know right away it's solving. And so I think uh, choosing a logo and then just being consistent and using it again and again. Great, thank you. Anyone else? I'd make a quick comment about uh, a da the Danish capital of America, if that's allowed. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm a, a kind of a believer in uh, humility and lacking that, uh, the truth. And uh, as far as I can tell, uh, I'm not sure that anybody, other Danish towns in America, think of Solvang as the capital, uh, Danish capital of America. And this may seem trivial or it may seem just hubris, but I suspect that you could have a contest or something and ask for some descriptors that might serve you equally well and yet not be quite so in the face of other small Danish communities <laughs> around the country. That's it. Great, thank you. All right, any other ones? All right, great, we're gonna move along, but feel free again, this whole workshop is about brand and identity, so I'm sure you can uh, comment on this later as well. All right, Solvang 2.0. This touches a little bit um, on the last workshop, if you were here for the resident workshop, and a little bit about um, what we'll talk about at the business workshop. But looking forward and saying, okay, well, let's get really into the brand identity. So a little bit, le little bit less so of just the brand elements, the graphics, but talking about the overall brand. What is the reputation of Solvang? What's the image? Uh, what do people think of when you see Solvang? And where do you want to see Solvang in one year, in five years? Um, and how does that affect the brand? So not talking as specific as we did in the last workshop about infrastructure or uh, events, but talking more about how the brand fits within that. And I, do, I know that last session, a couple of people did mention that and said, whatever we do, we want to make sure that the brand is considered with events. So we're kind of coming full circle here and talking about that now. So actually, I'll keep that page up. And does anybody want to speak to uh, kind of the future of, of Solvang and where we're headed? Thank you. Um, a couple of comments. Um, Mark Infanti, right? Mark Infanti, thank Infanti. you. Sorry. There's a couple of there's a couple of issues up there that 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 bother me. An updated brand identity. Um, I don't. I think you heard most of the people around here, and I agree with them that we don't need an updated brand identity per se. The brand of this comp this com this city, excuse me, uh, seems to be uh, quite well known and and well accepted, and it brings in a lot of tourists. Um, more events or less events. Uh, events that that go along with that identity, I agree with. Mm -hmm. The events that don't, aka the, the zoo, the, the carnival that came in here, um, uh, uh, not too crazy about that. 
new attractions and, and, and a new conference center. I think a conference center is a neat idea. It would bring a lot of longer term uh, tourists into this area. Uh, how we go about that is difficult because of the limitations we have in an in, in area to build a, a conference center. Uh, but I think the conference center is a great idea because you'll get people to stay here all week long in a conference center and not just on the weekends. That's where the hotels could use a little bit of support. Putting an event on the weekend isn't helping the hotels much. It's not going to do much for your TOT from what I've heard from the, the hotel owners. So. Where do I see it in a year? Uh, not a lot of changes. The conference center I like, some of the events that match our image I like. Great, thank you so much. And just so everyone knows, these are just ideas to spur thoughts, not anything specific. Anyone else on this topic? Uh, Susan Williams again. Um, I really like the idea of a conference center I I know we get tired of the vets hall but I think that the vets hall can be modernized and utilized for small conferences and to bring people in midweek we need more midweek business and I think that would be extremely helpful um, and one of the things I like to see in solving that might go along with branding is um, Denmark is very big on the environment I would like to see solving cleaner the sidewalks the trash cans i'd like to see more recycling containers um, i don't believe there are any recycling containers down at the west end of town so i think those kind of things are really important that solving needs to sparkle and that should be part of what we do great thank you susan i just wanted to point out i appreciate that you kind of stuck with the branding uh, with your comments and, and all of you that have spoken because that is what we're here to, to talk about, not just whether or not we want certain things, but how does that fit into the image? Um, so I, I know I think there was another comment. And then we'll, we'll move on to the next topic. Hi, my name is uh, Thorne Kindersley. My uh, main business in Solvang is I uh, work with Arnie Hansen, Arnie Save Miss Able Skiver, and continue without Booth. So to address your concerns here, one is that um, this branding word is kind of new to me. I kind of feel like I'm being hit with a multi-marketing meeting or something like that. Uh, when I studied geography at university is cities and communities were divided up into sites and situations. And a site would be like Monterey, where there are no white sandy beach, or Santa Barbara, where there are the uh, American Riviera. A situation is like Solvang, where our situation is that we're a small Danish village perpetuating Danish cultural values and cultural heritage. So to answer your question, what would I like to see in 10 years is um, through the food booth uh, and my family history, we've been very active in promoting uh, Scandinavian events. Right now, there's no Santa Lucia Center celebration in Solvang. Uh, there was done, one done by the Petersons a few years ago. Uh, there's no Midsummer Celebration, which is the 4th of July equivalent in Scandinavia. So I'd like to see the Scandinavian culture, culture <laughs> promoted as part of our heritage. That's what's founded Solvang. It was founded on a, uh, a Hemsloyden or a uh, Scandinavian handicraft school. And I'd like to see that continued. That's why we are here today. So that's all my comments. Thank you. And I missed your name because there was a little feedback. Thorn. Thorn. And really quickly, there actually is a Santa Lucia Day this year. It's the next Friday, the 13th, there will be a Santa Lucia Day Parade. Um, I just posted about it on Facebook. It just received the information from the Yule Fest organizers. Um, but if you have questions about that, see me after. We would love all of you to participate. And uh, One more, and then we have to move on to the next topic. I would just like to say, I'm Ron Palladino from Renaissance Antiques. I would just like to say that I think part of our branding and part of the image that we want to project to the world is what we've created in this architectural community that mimics the Danish, the old Denmark, not the new Copenhagen, and I don't think we ever want to become that. Uh, we want to look like that main street everyone goes to Copenhagen to see. And the, uh, and, and it's the, the gentleman that mentioned it earlier uh, selected one of my pet peeves. When we moved here 44 years ago, 
the buildings were colorful and, and bright, just like Copenhagen. And somehow, in the last two decades, we've devolved into these beige and white and buildings that make n they have no relationship to what Copenhagen looks like. And, and I think we've brought our image down physically by not you know, just living this vibrancy that the Danes have accomplished in, uh, in Denmark. So I, th I think that's part of our branding, part of our image, is what we do with the town. We desperately need infrastructure such as more flowers and, and uh, color and street lamps, which is something that's been debated for decades. The uh, people are always urging, urging we merchants to stay open at night. It's not possible in a dark city. If you turn the street lights off at Disneyland, everybody would go home. So we've tried to get this message through that people are not going to walk the streets in the winter, in the dark, in the cold, without light, without street lamps. So we need to do this like Victoria. We need to have beautiful street lamps with flower baskets hanging from them. This, this could transform the town in a year. You're talking about long-term things. It doesn't have to be long-term. And it's not that expensive. We're paying an outrageous amount of money to PG&E for these fiberglass poles we've lived with for 40 or 50 years. And we could have our own cast iron, beautiful street lamps for less money in the long run. That's These great, are the kind you. of infrastructure things I want to see happening, and they can happen now. They can happen right away if we just put our mind to it. Thanks, Ron. Those are great suggestions. Uh, okay, we're going to move on to the next topic. Okay, what does Solvang mean to you? Um, so, a oh, little font issue there. So, uh, what does it mean to you? We're going to brainstorm. We're going to think about words that evoke Solvang. So, if someone says to you, um, you know, tell me about Solvang, and they've never been here before, what are the first words that come to mind? Those are just three examples. Then we're going to talk about landmarks and icons as well. Um, are there icons? I've heard several of you mention Mermaid is a, a very big icon for Solvang. Uh, Hans Christian Andersen's mentioned there. You may think of other things like table skeevers or pastries or um, sweets in general, smorgasbord. There are a lot of things that I hear people talk about. Activities and locations as well. Uh, what kind of things do you think of right away when you hear Solvang? So this is the part where I'm going to pull out the whiteboard, and we're actually going to focus on writing down words, and then we'll take a picture at the end of this. And this will be super helpful for if we do move forward in any changes in the branding, even if it's just refreshing the current brand. So I'm going to steal my bird if you don't mind. Can everybody hear me? All right, great. Forgive me, my handwriting is not great, but um, I'm going to go ahead and write down all of your ideas here. So Marissa does have a mic. Um, I want to try to move quickly through this, so I think it's going to be okay since we're writing it down to just raise hands at a certain point, but we'll start out with the mic. And I'm going to go back to this slide here. We're going to first talk about adjectives and descriptors and start coming up with some great words. This is actually what you do when you workshop uh, any kind of branding initiative. And you're going to be the first ones to be involved with this. Who wants to start? Any kind of single words? Bakeries, that bakeries all right. Clean. Well done, okay. Sunny fields? Wholesome. Ah, oh, okay. Crisp. 
crisp. Tradition, okay. Smiling. Storks. And we are going to talk about landmarks and icons next, too. Any other single adjectives that make you think of solving? Yes, totally. Extra underline there. Colorful. All right, luxurious as an adjective. There you go, that's a good one. Old world. Old world. Rural. Rural. Village. Village. Fairy tale. Fairy tale. You guys are good at this. Ooh. I didn't eat dinner yet, and I know you guys are going to make me hungry through this process. Instagrammable. Instagrammable. Great. And then what was yours? I'm going to put both on. Oh, I've got that one. Perfect. Instagrammable. Theater fest. Maybe theatrical, too? Theatrical. I'll put theatrical up here, too. Any other ones? You know what? I'm going to save that one for the next one, the landmark icons. That's a good one for... And we'll probably put a couple of those here, too. Okay, great. So I'm going to take a quick picture. Uh, so we have this. It's also on the, the uh, video, too. And this is super helpful. Thank you, everybody. This is great. So you can see how just an exercise like this, it might seem obvious, but imagine someone who doesn't know solving or someone who even does know solving but needs to focus on colors and fonts and all of that kind of thing. Or chocolate. <laughs> really hungry. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to write Christmassy and we'll just put lights. I'll know what that means. <laughs> okay, one more picture and then we're going to do the icons and landmarks. Let's see, how's the other side here? Yeah, let's just. Does that flip? No? Okay. All right, great. So let's see. I don't know if there's anything helpful on this page. Yes. Okay. So just to give you some ideas, buildings, activities, locations, icons. This is when we're talking even more about imagery. So that was more about like the adjectives. This is imagery. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of the things that were mentioned here. I think we had um, theater fest and windmill. <coughs> So I'm not sure if it's E R or E, but half timber. Half timber. T 
T-I-M-B-R-E? B it's B E R? Okay. Architecture. Yeah, and actually this is a, thank you, Erin, that's a good one. Um, our, I know I didn't probably spell that right. Um, but with that said, if there's specific architecture as well, that makes you? Elverhoy. Copper roofs? Copper roofs. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah, let me change. Okay, we can do both. Um, sorry, and I, I know someone else said something now. I'll get that in one second. Oops. Ian? Ian, of course. Solving Park. And then I heard businesses as well. Danish Pringle that are hanging on buildings. Mm -hmm. KR? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he is. And also the King and King sign. Hmm. <laughs> Someone said Christmas trees? Christmas trees. The new, the newer. The new Christmas tree, yes. It's beautiful. I heard someone say visitor center, fountains, that's a good one. Clock tower, yeah. Dragon Tower? What's great about all of these, too, is that if we were to ever do anything like augmented reality, they can utilize a lot of these landmarks and icons to make them come to life and give you um, more information uh, about all of its history and culture. Any other ones? Got that? Great. Oh, yes, the Founding Fathers. That's a good one. And they were fun. King Christian Tower. King Christian Tower. Am I spelling this right? That is a very Instagrammable. The, um, and I recently learned there are multiple clocks that um, used to chime. Um, yeah, we can put that here. Hmm. Yeah, I, I just added that one. That's perfect. I believe that's historical too, right? Is that all? That's all. Centennial 
fairy tale wind veins have to do with you? The wind veins? They're very convenient. <laughs> I have the storks. Parking? Oh, you guys are good. I almost filled up the whole thing. Any last ones? The gazebo, yeah. Um, okay, and I'm also going to write someone had it last uh, Sunnyfields. Is that? We'll, we'll, we'll put it all under it here. Great. These are fantastic. All right. Perfect. We're, uh, okay. Because we're, we have all the decorated lights throughout the town. You're around, yeah. When my son was little, he used to say, it's decorated, mama. Great. Okay, we're going to take a picture of this. If you have more ideas, feel free to come up after and share. And um, this will be extremely useful. So these are all of the icons and landmarks for solving. We got the right group today. All right, let's see. What is next? I'm going to go ahead and pass this. OK, so that was, that was easy, right? Um, the next steps. So just to reiterate, we are going to take your feedback today. We're also going to take feedback that was in the survey, um, slightly different questions, but we're combining all of it. We'll also take feedback for anyone who comes to the council meeting on the 17th. And if you email the council or myself, PIO at cityofsolvane.com, and we will combine all of that data, bring it to the council meeting on the 17th, and the city council will decide next steps uh, regarding branding. Uh, and if they decide to move forward, uh, again, it could be anything from just taking the current uh, logo, refreshing it a little bit, or not touching it at all, or doing a full reband. They'll listen to what you have to say uh, and take it all into consideration. Please follow us online. It's also a great way to have your voice heard. We do compile that information as well. And it also gives you a chance to learn about events like this. Uh, currently, we do not have an email list for all residents. We are going to be working on that. But social media is a great way to find out more. Soon we'll have text notifications as well. Um, and we do try to reach out through mail as whenever we can. Uh, but clearly, if you are on social media, it's a great way to keep in touch. So you can find us, City of Solvang, for city news and for tourist-related news. Currently, it's Solvang USA and a Yule Fest Solvang or Solvang Yule Fest uh, if you're following the holiday events. So let's keep working together. Here's all of our contact information. Please make notes and reach out anytime. Thank you so much. All right. Uh-huh. I have a suggestion. Let me just get the mic because uh, we're recording. Okay, Eric Hutchins, residents. Uh, my suggestion is that somebody from your marketing group, like yourself or one of your assistants, and perhaps somebody from planning, uh, plan a trip and go over and take some photographs around Denmark of all the stuff that's, and you'll see the current overlaying the ancient. So you can see how, you know, things have been updated and, you know, you'll do a good job. But the idea is that if, if you if you want to really maintain and protect and grow the brand, go go to Denmark, and take pictures specifically with the idea in mind of co of what's transferable. Okay. Great, thank you. And yet we do have a couple more minutes. If anyone else has any comments they want to make about branding. I just suggest if you do that. Oh, oh just real quick. I just suggest if you do that, go to Denmark. Don't stay in Copenhagen. <laughs> go outside of Copenhagen to the small towns 
we have a sister city there. It's probably worth visiting that and seeing what they're like. Great. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> so just for uh, historical reference, we've been there, done that um, a few times, quite a few times in the past for the city. But uh, just input, uh, looking, at, looking at all these words, referencing things about this town that are unique and beautiful. Um, it's, to me, looking at this, I, I think you'd be hard pressed in a lot of towns to find a third of this in any town. And I think it's really a testament to what we have as a town and what we need to maintain. So, thank you. See, that was marketing right there. We just captured that on video and uh, send that out. Any other comments? Yeah, I have a comment. It's a little, bit dis, uh, a little bit of a disagreement with some of the previous comments, but my recommendation, if you go to Denmark, I would go to where the tourists go. Go to Tivoli Gardens, see what it's like. Replicate what the tourists in Denmark and Europe are doing. Great, thank you. Well, I think historically the um, city What's your name real quick? David Watts. Thank you. Historically, the Danes who came here came for a reason, um, a lot of different reasons. But when they first built the town, it was not Danish looking. They, they, they wanted very badly to fit in. But what we transitioned into uh, basically captured the best of the old world in the new world. And, and that's really what we have to cling to. Um, you know, we can go and take all kinds of pictures of Denmark um, or Europe, for that matter, but we have to bring back what's best. Great, thank you. All right, with that, I'm going to call it a night. If you would like, you are welcome to stay for the business workshop at 830. Um, and we are going to give priority to businesses during public comment, but you are more than welcome to stay and, and listen to that as well. Thank you so much for coming tonight, everybody.
Um, we're not doing public comment until the first thing. Let me see. Yeah. No, I mean, not oh. the first item. The first topic? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. Are there more people coming in? I want to make sure. Everybody ready? All right. So if everyone could turn off their cell phones, um, we are going to get down to business. My name is Katie Fleckenstein. I'm the public information officer for the city of Solvang. Um, thanks to those of you who have, who have attended the last two workshops, um, which we are also referring to as sessions, just not to give the wrong idea. Uh, we are covering different topics, and then at the end of each topic, we will um, have public comments. So we're doing that mainly because we didn't know how many people would turn out and wanted to make sure that everyone gets to speak. So we're going to be a little bit strict tonight. Um, we're going to stick to two minutes per comment, um, and then as time allows, we can allow for additional comments. If somebody has said the same thing that you're going to say, please do not repeat it. I know that everyone wants to be heard, but because of time, we want to really make sure we're moving forward and hearing new ideas and new comments. So what I suggest is if you want to say the same thing that someone else said, just simply say, I agree with such and such comments, and we will be sure to have that written down. Just so everybody knows, this is being recorded for that purpose. All of the data collected from today, as well as from the surveys, will be brought to the city council meeting on December 17th. It's a Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. You are also welcome to attend that. Um, there may be some redundancy throughout this presentation and that's on purpose it's just because there's certain things that I really want to get across and make sure you're aware of make sure nobody misses opportunities to be heard so let's get started today we are going to talk about businesses in Solvang and how it relates to tourism so today's workshop, we're going to um, do quick introductions uh, we're going to talk about solving tourism a little bit the future of solving tourism solving events and holidays. We're going to talk about metrics. How do we measure tourism, marketing, and promotions? And we're going to talk about how you can get involved. And this, as far as I know, has never been done, um, a public session like this in this format through the city. So this is new. Um, if you have criticisms, I understand. Uh, feel free to give those to me. We want to learn and grow with each session. And we do hope to do this in the future. Specifically with businesses, our hope is to do this regularly, especially as we're kind of getting back into the swing of things uh, with tour tourism promotions. So meet our team. Um, as I mentioned, I'm the public information officer. Uh, I have uh, become involved with tourism and marketing for the city. And um, my role in that is yet to be determined. I've come to the meeting on the 9th if you liked anything I did today. Um, and then uh, Marissa is here. Hi, Marissa. She's here to help with uh, keep us on track and uh, help everybody out. So she's got microphones. You don't need to come up here for public comment. We're just going to pass around those mics to save time. We also have Anna Ferguson Sparks, who's still here. She's uh, here with Yule Fest. She's doing the PR for Yule Fest as well as for the city of Solvang. She'll get started on that very shortly here. And then Liz Daughter, some of you may know her as well, and she's helping us out with e-marketing and blogs. So moving forward, many of you know the history of, of Solvang and tourism and all of that, but just to put things into perspective, the city began their marketing efforts for tourism in 1986. In 2014, Measure Z was approved to increase the TOT, or the transient occupancy tax, from 10 to 12%. Uh, in 2015, the city nearly doubled its funding for tourism marketing, and here we are today in 2019, and we are beginning public engagement sessions to get feedback from the community. We started with residents at 6.30, we talked about branding at 7.30, and now we're here to talk to you businesses and business owners here at 8.30. So moving forward, so right now um, the city council hired this group of contractors to make sure that tourism promotions 
there wasn't a gap in tourism promotions in the meantime while the council made decisions on next steps moving forward. So we have that team in place to cover all of the basics of marketing. So keeping the website updated, updating the events calendar, social media, being a liaison with visitors and with businesses. So we've been uh, working on social media. We are going to be making some changes, making sure that everything is clear and you know where to go for solving information if you are a visitor as well as if you are a resident. User-generated content. Uh, I'm personally really excited about this. If you do follow the city council meetings, we recently signed on with a platform called CrowdRiff, and we've started utilizing that already. Um, we were able to get it 60% off, which is great. And we are using that to get the license to use content from Instagram, Facebook, all of the social media channels, and repurpose that in our marketing materials. And why do that, you might say? You know, there are a lot of bad photos out there, but there's also a ton of beautiful beautiful photos and some really talented photographers. I think we're extra lucky being so close to Los Angeles that we do have a, an astounding number of beautiful photos of Solvang on Instagram uh, and Facebook. And so what we get to do is we get to use this software to be more efficient and as well as legal in utilizing these photos. So we've uh, developed the hashtag, hashtag the real solving. And uh, one, one person laughed at it and said, the real, were we not real before? And I want to stress, yes, we were real before, but we want to get even more authentic because a lot of times in destination marketing, you do photo shoots and you spend a lot of money on creating content. And in order to stay relevant, you have to keep spending that money and keep keep creating content. What this allows us to do is get free content. Um, and, and again, the program is very uh, cost effective. And you can use that to always have refreshed new photos of solving and video as well. So if you are posting on Instagram, please consider using hashtag the real solving. It will help us find you. Uh, we are using other hashtags as well. And uh, we want to work with all of you. And we'll talk about that later. We're also throwing out some ideas just for the sake of this conversation because we do want to get feedback from you on all topics related to tourism. And we're throwing out the idea of augmented reality incorporated into our marketing. So picture this. Um, you may know the wine label Nine Crimes. If you take your phone and you take an app, you can actually put it up to the label and your camera will actually start to have the label of the wine talk to you. It's, it's a little bit drying at first. It's a person's face, and they come to life, and they start talking to you all about the history of that brand. And so that's just one example of augmented reality. But you can actually take your phone. You can walk around solving. You can take landmarks, and those things can come to life with a story or information. And there's lots of ways to use augmented reality for uh, an exp enhanced experience that can be no cost to the visitor um, and can also help promote businesses, too. So we're looking at um, augmented reality. We're looking at visitor center kiosks. We're looking at all sorts of different options for creating a, an enhanced experience for people who come to Solvang and making sure that they're learning about us if they're not in Solvang so that they hopefully will come and visit us soon. So keeping it current uh, website, we want to keep your business information up to date. Um, I will tell you that the website, the SolvingUSA.com, when we started updating it, had a lot of outdated information. We heard from some people, hey, my event's outdated or my, my uh, store is outdated. But a lot of people we have not heard from. And so Marissa's been working really hard to reach out to a lot of you. Um, she's been going door to door. There's plenty more of people to visit. Um, we have some council members who have volunteered to go door to door as well but you should hopefully have received an email and if you haven't please see Marissa right after this meeting and that email has a link to a form that will get all of your information updated on the website it will also make sure that we have the correct contact information and hopefully not just your contact information but maybe somebody else in your business who also is very involved with tourism and tourism marketing so we want your information. And then the second link was the link to the business survey about tourism, which will cover some of what we're talking about today. And we'll also get a little bit more specific on other topics. Uh, you don't have to answer all the questions. You don't have to take it. But if you want your voice to be heard, these are great ways to do that. And we'll talk about other ways you can have your voice heard uh, today as well. 
events calendar, please submit your events. Um, because we are limited in, in, in staff right now, it would take a lot of time for us to go out and seek out all of the events. So we're asking you to submit your events, make sure that information is accurate, and please submit a really good photo. It can be something you took on your phone. We can always work with you too if you need help with that. But um, we're not going to be using flyers for Instagram, so we do want photos. Uh, so if you have a flyer, please do send that, but we also want a photo to represent your event. Um, hours and offerings. Keep us informed. I know those change all the time. And as we develop all of these programs, um, we'll want to hear from you regularly about what's new with offerings. Coming soon, I'm very excited about this. Um, if you were here at 6.30, you already know this, but we are getting a text notification platform for the city. And what's great about uh, incorporating tourism with city communication efforts is we don't have to spend money twice. We're spending money on one platform. Why not use it for tourism too? So um, one example of that is actually we can use CrowdRiff for content for both websites, the city of Solvang.com, which we will be redoing, um, and SolvangUSA.com, which we will also be redoing. And uh, text notifications is a great way to keep in touch with folks. A lot of people are inundated with emails um, and they don't oftentimes like to share their address so this is a great way to keep in touch about events as well as um, deals and then of course the city will be using it for crisis management as well so that oftentimes um, pertains to visitors too if they want to know what's happening make your voice heard just a reminder i'm going to say this a lot tonight if you haven't yet please fill out the survey and i know not all of you have filled it out because i know how many people have submitted the survey um, our residents have been overwhelming i i think we have like two over 208 responses already and it's only been a handful of days during the thanksgiving holiday uh, so i anticipate more resident surveys but we have not received nearly uh, um, enough responses from business Businesses. And we do hear from businesses, so this is a really good way to be heard. So please do take this, and then if you have friends that own businesses, please share this as well. Any questions just about that initial kind of where we're at for this conversation? Regarding the survey, it would be nice to be able to go back once you, once you, once you click on a button or you do something like that. Sorry, we need the mic for all comments. So I took the I took the survey, but um, one of the things I didn't like was that you make a decision on something and you're thinking about it, and you go on to the next program, the next one, next page, next page, whatever. But you cannot go back and mm. change your answer. You can't do. You can't once you get a feel of what kind of questions are coming at right. you. It would be nice to be able to do that. That is a good feature. Thank you. And and we did try a new um, software just because it's pretty, but we uh, we probably will go back to um, a different one uh, that has more of those capabilities. But thank you. We love that kind of feedback. Okay, first topic: future of solving tourism. This is we want to hear what your thoughts are. So um, one of the topics of conversation tonight and, and what I hear almost every day is how much do we focus on Danish culture? Um, I've heard from every side of the spectrum about uh, really focusing on Solvain's Danish heritage to other people saying we need to talk about things that aren't Danish. So something to throw out there that as we start these conversations, we want to hear your thoughts. Smart cities. Um, we talked about augmented reality before. There's other ways to really connect everything to make it a smart city, uh, to make sure that all of the internet of things are connected. So just to throw it out there, for instance, let's say you have an app. The app has a directory. It has deals. It has a augmented reality self-guided tour. Then you go to the visitor center. The visitor center has a kiosk. It's connected, has the same information that's on that app. You're at home, you go to the website, same information. It's all tied in together. It's efficient, it's cohesive, it's consistent, and it's accurate. Uh, so looking at how those pieces can tie in together. Looking at Wi-Fi, smart transportation, you know, what kind of ways can solving become smarter? And sometimes that means eco-friendly too, just in turn, because of, of going digital. Instagrammable Solvang. So as you all know, Solvang is extremely Instagrammable. We have a lot of beautiful architecture, landmarks, um, pastries. We have all sorts of things to brag about. And we are just thrilled with the user-generated content that's out there. So I think you know, we can definitely harness this more. would love to hear your thoughts on ways we can do that. And that's something I've seen at events as well, where people really focus on making it Instagrammable. 
supporting residents. So during the resident workshop, we talked a little bit about how does tourism impact you? You know, what are ways that we want to communicate to the city as well as to businesses of uh, things we should keep in mind um, that affect residents? Same thing, vice versa, right? What can businesses think about that might affect residents, whether it be if you're having an event and perhaps people are parking in front of the neighborhoods, something to think about notifying residents, noise, there's also positive things that can come out of working with residents. We can talk about local discounts in bringing more locals to you during those off-peak seasons and midweek, because those are really the bread and butter for when the visitors aren't here in droves. Family friendly as well. That's something that we've been hearing a lot of lately, a lot. Um, for those that did enjoy the fall festival, a lot of them said they were happy that it was family friendly. For other people um, who, you know, whether or not they like the fall festival, they keep saying, you know, there needs to be a few more things to do for families. Um, that's something for the businesses can start to look at and say, oh, how can I be family friendly if I am a family friendly business? Experiential tourism. This is a topic um, that I'm really excited to bring, to put on the table here tonight. Uh, the idea of having unique experiences for sale for visitors that they can't get anywhere else. So I'm just going to use a few examples. I hope a few of you don't mind, but let's say somebody wanted to learn how to make chocolate or candy, or they wanted a tour of a bakery, or then they wanted to go to a winery and see how you crush grapes. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do that are hands-on that can be created for people and they're willing to spend the money on that and they're willing to spend a lot more and they're willing to spend multiple nights and they're also sometimes willing to go off peak or midweek in order to have these one-of-a-kind experiences. Um, so there are ways that we could potentially look into more of these combination packages that bring all of you together and bring tourists here that will spend more money and not necessarily the crowds. All right, let's talk about some of these things. We've got experiential tourism. We have supporting residents, what, uh, how to make our city smarter, more Instagrammable, do we include Danish culture? So just some of these ideas, and it's not limited to this, but we would love to hear your ideas. And before we start with public comment, um, a few guidelines. We're gonna stick to the two minutes. Um, I don't wanna be rude, but if I interrupt you, it's not personal. <laughs> we just wanna make sure we stick to the two minutes. Um, please no bad mouthing of other businesses. You are welcome to provide constructive criticism on events or anything like that, but no name calling. Um, and we wanna talk about moving forward, so just try to keep it positive as well. We are going to start with uh, public, um, comment slips and then we will open it up uh, as time allows. So first comment is Tracy Beard and you're welcome to just stay where you are um, and we'll get you on camera, thanks. I think we need to respect the residents first. The business community did not do a good enough job telling the residents what does tourism do for them. Um, we didn't tell them what the TOT, the, B, the um, T bit did, how that they have sidewalks, they have infrastructure, that they have the taxes that for the community. That's what the business community pays to the city of Solvang. We didn't do a good enough job, I don't think we did. We didn't let people know that half of the, some of the general fund, most of it is controlled by what comes from the TOT. Co closing Copenhagen hurts our businesses no matter what happens. They pay the highest rents on Copenhagen, on Alisal, to be in those businesses coming right off. We need to look at moving events on the other side of Copenhagen if we want to close 1st Street and 2nd Street down to Oak Street. We need to get people into town first, then we can do events. I think we need to pick four to five events a year from what our survey says. We need everything to reflect Danish at every, measure, at every step we go. And we need to always remember what Measure Z was voted on in 2014 for this community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next up we have Eric Hutchins. Hi, I'm, I'm gonna put on um, a uh, hat of my boss who couldn't be here tonight, she has to be at the vineyard, um, Jennifer Arant, and uh, she owns Lions Peak. Um, we've talked about this extensively. We see tourism marketing as breaking down into uh, general ongoing marketing versus event 
marketing, and then we see events breaking down into events that support the brand, and as far as we're concerned, the brand is Danish, uh, versus events that don't support the brand. So it seems to me like if you can rank events or proposed events from a, on a one to five scale, with one being the least supportive of Danish, having nothing to do with Danish, and five being very Danish, you'd want to give priority to the stuff that was higher on the scale. But in both cases, the uh, events that do take place can either take place in detriment to some of the business community, or you can take um, uh, measures to make it so it's not in detriment to some. As mentioned before me, every time Copenhagen is shut down to regular vehicular traffic, uh, our income drops uh, 25 to 30 percent, sometimes higher. We dropped uh, 80 percent of our income uh, during the fabulous weekend with the six-story uh, Ferris wheels out in front of our business. Uh, same with First Street. It's gotten to the point where it almost seems like the city wants to pay people that don't live in this community who have businesses to bring events in and, and they want to close off First Street or in Copenhagen at every opportunity. And I'm, just, I'm thinking, you know, th that's not fair to the, those of us who do pay those high rents for, for those positions in town. So uh, I think the perfect, or we think the perfect solution is to protect the identity of this community by setting up a, a permanent event venue on the other side of some nice wall of trees so that people can go to the event, it can have nothing to do with Danish land, and then um, they can say, gosh, we're tired of this, let's walk through the trees to this wonderful little town that's Danish land. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. All right, any other comments? Great. <coughs> Topic, yeah. Oh, and just a reminder, uh, because we're, we're live streaming right now, if you could just say your name at the beginning and what business you're a part of. Now it's on. Power and on. Sorry. Aaron Peterson. I've got a couple of restaurants in town. Um, to echo what, what was said, I, I think we really need to come up with the policy, city council, on how many events a year we should have. If it's three, four, or five, we should have events that support the town. There will be events that we all don't make money at. Everything doesn't have to have a rate of return. It can be Sunnyfields Park is not a rate of return. It's just a great thing, but we all put money into it. So there will be things that we don't always make money at. We need to stop closing our streets. Locals come into town and they see another orange cone and they're shutting down streets. We've got so much public space with parks and a parking lot or outside of town or Memorial Hall parking lot where we could shut down those and let the public drive through. The locals are just getting ticked off at us. They're blaming us, business owners, for shutting the streets down and, pl and plugging up the, the, the corridors. We've got one corridor through the entire valley. Most of the traffic is not caused by us. It's caused by the stuff that's going on on the west side and the east side. We've got one high school on the east side. We've got a growing population on the west side. We have a YMCA on one side. We've got fast food on the other side. We have a casino on one side. We've got a 101 on the other side. It all comes through the hourglass of solving. Stop closing our streets down for events. Don't have events for events' sake. The events we can have, we could probably all agree, a Fourth of July parade, a Christmas parade, a Danish days, the Rancho Vistadores. Um, we could come up with a list and a criteria and stop just having events for events' sake in our streets. Farmer's Market, I know probably I'll be unpopular, move it out of the street and put it in the park, put it in the parking lot. Keep yeah. First Street open. How hard is that to do? And it would probably be more popular. Um, solving and closing is like the ski mountain. It's like the beach, it's like the lake. Our attraction to get TOT is that they come to see our little town, like the beach. We don't have the beach, we don't have Morro Bay Rock, we don't have the lake, we have solving, which is architecture, safe small town, brick sidewalks, lovely, lovely, individually family-owned businesses where everybody is working side by side to make, it, to make the town successful. 
Charm is what we're trying to sell. We need to keep doing it. The events for events sake and shutting our streets down, not a good formula. Thanks, Aaron. And we do have an event section coming up, just so everybody knows. Um, so one of your main things say, was... Say your name real quick. Jesse. My name's Jesse uh, Verkler, and I'm at the Hamlet Inn and the Outer Dug Inn. You started off by talking about uh, Danish culture in regards to the future of solving tourism. Mike, I have a question real quick. So t when you're talking about the future of solving tourism, is this going into how you're going to actually start to brand it? Is this part of the rebranding of... Is, is that what so, this So we did is? just discuss rebranding okay. in a little bit more detail. So we're not going to go fully into it today, but okay. because I know a lot of you weren't at that session, we do want to hear from you on that topic as well. But specifically, even uh, branding as far as it, it goes into events and to activities and general marketing. So if we're doing social media, how much time are we spending on promoting Danish culture versus non-Danish culture? So my opinion on the Danish culture aspect of it is I think it's important to continue to, pursue, to, to focus on that, mostly because that's the draw of solving. If, if, if we're just looking at solving itself as opposed to the San Inez Valley, I think the draw of solving for our guests definitely is that it's this charming Danish town. I do think that there can be a modernization of, of that marketing. I do think Yule Fest has done quite a bit of that in terms of the 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 branding of it, the the little cards that come in, the website, th that kind of stuff, um, and it connects with some of the things that are even going on. If you go on to Sunset Magazine, they've been talking a ton about Danish culture, and and I forgot what the word is. It's Hig, 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 Hig. Am I saying yes. that right? Yes, yes. That's such a big. <laughs> thing right now in in tourism in travel the importance of that and so I mean the reason I feel like I'm here in Solvang is because of its charm because of its coziness because that there is this history tradition but also Danish culture or Danish just architecture even can be modernized it can continue to be cozy comfortable all of those kinds of things but it can also have a different twist to it like a refresh. Great, thank you so much. Okay, now's the event time. I know this is a, a hot button topic. Um, and again, just be, because a lot of you have similar feelings on these topics, just be sure to say I agree with if it's the same comment. Um, All right, so before we start this topic, I do want to just clarify a few things and I think um, address somebody's comment um, recently. So we've, we have different events here in Solvang. We have the business events that business owners put on. We have city hosted events and that right now, oops, sorry, that right now is uh, Yule Fest, which is happening November 28th through January 3rd. And that is actually paid for by the city and managed through a contractor that the city hired. So that's considered a city hosted event. Um, the city council has um, mentioned that they want to make events more financially sustainable so that if they're given seed, gi giving seed money to an event or if they're hosting an event themselves, they need to know and track through metrics that it's actually going to become financially sustainable so it pays for itself and doesn't need to keep coming back to the city for more money. So that's just a note I wanted to make if you haven't been watching the city council meetings, that's been talked about a lot. Uh, also, city-sponsored events are a little bit different. So the Fall Fest was a city-sponsored event. That means somebody came to the city council and said, I'm doing this event, would like your support, um, would and I'm essentially applying for funding for my event, for marketing to get more people to Solvang. So some examples would be the Fig Fondo, um, Fall Fest, and uh, I believe Wine Country Rodeo were some recent events that the city council sponsored. Another thing of note, um, I apologize, I don't remember which date it's on, but coming up in the next month and a half on the advanced calendar is a topic of conversation for the city council about how to come up with those measurements and those requirements for event funding. So I know someone just talked about that. I've heard that at the other workshops, and the council will be addressing that in future meetings. So it's a great chance to be heard if you uh, want to speak on that topic. Late nights, I think uh, somebody mentioned this in the last meeting. Um, a gentleman mentioned that 
if we had more street lamps, he would keep his business open later. And I thought that was a, a helpful comment to hear. So late night, that's something that the city staff and city council have heard constantly from visitors, residents, businesses about this topic. So would love to hear from you. Would you be open to staying later? Um, if you attended the Yule Fest merchant meeting, I know they came to merchants and said, we really want you to stay open later so that we don't bring outside vendors in for our Christmas market. We want to have you be the vendors for this Christmas market. And it seemed to be very successful. I believe they have over 30 businesses that agreed to stay open later. Um, but that's a topic of conversation, kind of big picture. Are you willing to stay open later? What about for special events, weekends, all the time? What would it take to have more options for visitors that come so that things are open a little bit later than 5 or in some cases later than 9 p.m., depending on what type of business you are? Your events. Um, we wanted to make some suggestions, but also, of course, hear your thoughts on your events. But um, we would like to see, work together as a community to make sure that events aren't conflicting with each other. And I know a couple of people have mentioned, you know, if there's these huge events back to back, that can be an issue, right? Especially if there's street closures. Well, same thing, I believe, with business events. If there's too many businesses hosting an event on the same day, everybody, it can hurt business if it's not communicated well. So we want to help be that conduit and that's something we can start right now and we're starting obviously by being here but then um, again hopefully you've received an email from Marissa. Once we have your updated contact information we can really start that flow, that communication so that as people are developing new events we're spreading the word and we're saying oh you know there's another big event that same day it might affect yours. Something to consider. Uh, piggybacking on city events, so Yule Fest. We would love for you to host events that are in that same Yule Fest spirit. And moving forward, as we develop these key events or themes, it's a great opportunity for businesses to come up with their own events that piggyback on that theme. And we can promote that through uh, solving tourism marketing efforts. Submitting your events. Um, I, I believe I've I'm forgetting which one I mentioned in which workshop, but uh, we want to make sure you submit your events so that we can get that on there. So uh, please do, and please do it often. The sooner you get it on there, the more likely we can get it out to the 30,000 plus social media followers. And tagging your photos. Uh, please do tag. Uh, as we talk about branding and branding elements such as hashtags and handles and what that means in tourism, we will keep you updated. So if anything changes, then we will make sure you have those updated hashtags. All right, so we are talking about events, late night, city hosted, city sponsored events. We wanna hear all of your, your comments. Keep in mind, we have already talked about this a little bit tonight. So if you agree with something, just say, I agree. Um, we have Claudia Verona, am I saying that right? Uh, yes, and uh, I will echo what has already been said about the events uh, closing the street and having a huge impact on our business. Um, we only get uh, two days out of the whole uh, week to really do business. We really need to be out there. And if you constantly have uh, events and uh, you know bad weather days and whatever might impact um, public flow, you know, natural disasters, whatever, it really limits the amount of days that you have to really make up for the slow days. And that really hurts when you have uh, 10 horses to support or, you know, payroll or rent or whatever else. So um, if there are events that the locals want, and I realize as a local merchant that um, the things that will bring tourists that spend money are not necessarily the same things that bring locals into town, but if there are events that locals like, then we really need to limit other events that are bringing their own vendors and their own food and do not bring any activities for our locals to do, nor revenue to our uh, local merchants. Uh, so other than that, I'm very much in agreement with what everybody else has had to say. Great, thank you. And um, just to note for anyone watching at home, uh, you're with Solvay and Trolley, correct? Yes. Great. An ice cream parlor. An ice cream parlor. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Skitt, if you could state your uh, name and business. Uh, Ed Skitt, I do have several uh, commercial properties in town. Uh, the comment I'm going to be making is in regards to the city council uh, um, using um, 
people coming into an event saying they are going to bring in TOT into the communities. Uh, the last one that was very uh, uh, well, ran into some problem was the uh, Fig Fondo. Uh, he came in and saying he was going to bring a large number of people coming in and raising a large amount of TOT. It turns out, the, and I, when it came in, I said, November is a slow month, but the uh, motels, and I think Jesse will uh, admit, uh, uh, confirm this with me, is that weekends during November are very good. Uh, the Fondo came in on Veterans Day, which was a three-day weekend. We were already booked solid for that weekend. I believe most of the motels were already booked solid. So the uh, premise that some of these events are going to bring in additional uh, TOT funding, uh, the city really needs to take a look at when these events are coming and go talk to uh, businesses that are going to uh, really be affected by the TOT and things like that. Because it doesn't do any good to have somebody come in and say they're uh, going to bring in $35,000 uh, on TOT, which was quote unquote a wash when we already had $35,000 worth of TOT coming in and we didn't have to give the money away in the first place. And it was to a, a company which was doing as a uh, private uh, concern. So the uh, city needs to take a closer look at when they start doing these events on uh, how they are going to affect the TOT. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Lisa, and then Mitch. Just a quick comment regarding. Real quick, uh, name and business. Oh, I'm sorry, Lisa Messa. My husband and I own uh, the Good Life Craft Beer and Wine Cellar on the corner of First and Mission. Um, regarding businesses that are open late night, uh, what I'd really love to see is a tab on the Solving USA page that says Solving After Dark, uh, leading everyone specifically to. Uh, evening activities. There's actually a lot of places that are open at s till 7, 8, 9, 10, midnight, 2 a.m. Um, but people don't know about them and they're kind of random and, and you don't expect a retail shop to be open until midnight. Um, but if retail's open till 7, you've got restaurants and wine lounges open until 9, 10 o'clock. It would be great if there was a coffee shop or pastries. We get asked all the time where we can have coffee or dessert. Um, and then letting them know the the other places that are open, the late night bars that are open until midnight and 2 a.m. So if there was a tab people could click on, it would be great. That's in the website specs for the new website already. Perfect. And, and also actually that's a good note, um, just for our information from all of you, it would be good to know um, if your hours are, um, are set or if you have floating hours. I have been to several businesses in Solvang that claim to be late night and then they close about three hours earlier than what they say they're going to. So I think it would be good for us as marketing out to visitors to make sure we're giving them accurate information that doesn't, doesn't happen to them. So that might be something we can note on that late night tab is that, you know, if, you know, subject to change or something like that. So thank you. That's great. Um at Jamie Baker, Space VR, and I want to second what Lisa just said uh, about being open. I, I think it's a great idea about having a solving a solving after hours. We're, we're open till normally 10 o'clock, um, so it's it's kind of nice, and we do get people coming in who are looking for something to do. So that's that's great. I I mean, where where our mission is is trying to work on this midweek, trying to create more traffic. I when I first here and I saw that the the economic engine that ran the town in the late 70s, early 80s was coming out of that theater fest where people could come and see a different show every night for four nights. And if they were coming for four days, they were eating here, they were staying here, and they were spending time walking up and down the streets. So creating a maybe a subset of how do we increase the entertainment value late at night during the midweek would probably help the stays. I think that's where residents come in too. Really quick, I think, Rich, did you have something? Cause yeah, I was just going to echo what Aaron said regarding closures, street closures and things like that. And I think uh, the other thing that I, I think most businesses understand and residences here also, that we have this unique village that is very unique to California, I think. There aren't too many places you can go and find a little town like this. And I think we have a, the option of being very, very picky 
on what events and who we allow to come in to do these events. Uh, I think that's our it's our choice, and we have the right to do that in a very picky way. Thank you. Uh, and real quick, uh, just for the cameras, media Rich watching. Rich Condit. Right, thank you. Ron Palladino again. And I, I want to say that I agree 100% with what Aaron and Ed said about closing the streets and all. That's very important. But um, I think in we're, there's this discussion where we seem to be narrowing into we have to select certain events, have events that are the right ones at the right time, and I think that's very important. I think part of that process is a process of elimination. I think we've learned enough in the last couple of years to know which events are counterproductive. In my opinion, I have never seen very many businesses benefit from the cycle events. I have never seen many businesses benefit from the car shows. There's an awful lot of these events that we have done perennially for year after year, providing free venues for these clubs, and they're not giving anything back to the city. And I don't, I don't think these things should go on. We need to narrow down which things are productive for us, which are good for the community, which are good for the locals. And, you know, it's, it's us first. It's solving first. You know, we are really just a, become kind of a, a doormat for a lot of these organizations. They, they come in, they take over our streets, they, they don't, half of them don't go to the restaurants, they don't stay overnight, they're just in and out. And it's just a free ride for them. And those are the things I think we have to eliminate. Sooner the better. So we have room to do more worthwhile events. When we had things here like the, uh, the knife show, that was a wonderful event. That brought people who spent money, who stayed for three or four days. I had customers from all over the world that would come to that knife show. Now, I don't sell knives, okay? But it doesn't matter. They come in and they buy antiques. They go in and, and they buy food. I mean, these were good people. These are the kind of people we need. Maybe we need some culinary clubs. I mean, we can target some of these people who we know have spending potential, appreciate our old world atmosphere. They, they like the traditions we have here. These are the people we want to bring here. When we bring in some of these other clubs, they don't want to be here. It's just a free ride. Thanks, Ron. I smiled because uh, the surveys have shown that um, people want foodie events. That has been a, a common theme with the survey results so far. Any other comments, oh, Lisa? Katie, I just have a quick comment and, and question that you don't have to answer now, but I'd be very interested to know, someone mentioned the uh, midweek events um, and getting more locals, and, and again, solving is about locals and how do we get our locals in back into our community so that they can enjoy everything that we have. I'd be really interested in hearing what the locals want, what they had to say in the survey and in the earlier um, session that you had. Unfortunately, I do live here in Solvang. I couldn't make that event. But as business owners, what do our locals want to see? Where do they want to go? What evening events would they like to participate in or, or places would they like to see open? to where they will come back into town and actually enjoy the village that they live in. That's terrific, and I think we should touch upon that even more in the metrics section, but um, we will absolutely compile all this data from the workshops and the surveys, bring it to that meeting on the 17th, and that would be a really good way to hear about that, and, and I'll do my best as well to capture that into the reports coming out of that meeting. But uh, as always, if there's information that you feel hasn't been conveyed or you have questions, you can email me anytime as well so thank you that is that's great comment okay we're gonna move forward oh. one more sure sorry um diane wittenbrock um i just wanted to kind of point on what um, ron said here uh solvang is set up more for an adult playground you know to dine shop walk <laughs> you know what I'm trying, yeah. Um, you know, it, it's more designed for adults and retired people and to spend money, the gift shops. We're not really set up for small families. And to change it to a really family-oriented place, um, there's so much we'd have to change everything. And I don't mean that negatively, and I'm not saying that kids aren't allowed to be here. I'm just saying that maybe we need to focus more on the adults, the weekend. For uh, events, sorry, I just wanted to clarify, for events? Um, for everything and events. 
I, I know personally, just personally, um, kids with families, with kids, um, those aren't, they, they don't have disposable income. And I don't mean that negatively. And can you state your name and business just so for the? Diane Wittenbrock, Solving Knives, et cetera. Great, thank you. Okay, anything else? Okay, great. We're gonna move forward to the next topic, which is metrics. So this is an important one. We're just gonna touch upon this a little bit today, and then we'll talk about this more uh, at the meeting on the 17th. So tracking your customers. Um, one, one note I wrote, uh, listening to your comments, I'm curious whether or not you would be willing to answer surveys on a regular basis, like for instance, post-event, to let us know how did your business do, how did your hotel do post-event, so we can really find out not only from the TOT and from other data, but how, how do you feel it went as well. Would also love to know, how are you tracking your customers? Uh, so far, for the uh, survey results we've had, Everybody who's responded uh, is just tracking verbally. Um, you know, I, I do come from a background in the wine industry, and um, it varies quite a bit locally here whether or not people track information about their customers or not. Those that do tend to utilize their point of sale systems to track information. So, looking at um, ways that you can get information about your customers. Obviously, if you sell online, you can get information there as well. Google or website analytics your point of sale software, a lot of times you can put in zip codes. So when you're checking somebody out, you can put in a zip code where you're from. And that would be extremely helpful information for us marketing you to make sure we know where they're coming from already um, so that we know who our core base is. We obviously have a very, very, very good idea. But um, you'd be surprised how much numbers can differ a little bit from what our, our feelings are just talking to people. Social media insights are also very helpful. Again, it's not necessarily who's coming here um, on a regular basis, so it's not extremely accurate, but it's also very helpful. Loyalty programs can be great. That's a really good way to get more demographic information. Surveys are terrific if you do any surveys. Email sign-up forms, um, a lot of times uh, when I do email sign-up forms, I'll put in a few extra items that are not required, just to see if I can get a little extra information uh, about my customers. Information, again, zip code, age, gender, income are just some basics. But obviously, depending on what your business is, you might be able to ask very specific questions related to your product or services. Uh, tourism related metrics, this is from the resident uh, presentation. I included this just in case anybody here needed a refresher on what TOT and sales tax and TBIT are. Uh, but the TOT currently is 12%, and that's a tax on all lodging stays under 30 days. Sales tax is 7.75%, and the T-bid fee is $2.50 a night uh, for hotel stays in, uh, that goes to visit the San Inez Valley for promoting tourism. Um, oh, sorry, some of these fonts got messed up when moving to different computers. So uh, where are tourism dollars spent? That is something that the city council has talked a lot about of late, and the goal in these workshops is that no one told me what to put in here, but is to take feedback from visitors, from residents, from businesses, as well as the city council, and start to throw out some of these ideas so we can have these conversations about these different topics. So one thing that's been talked about in a lot of the council meetings is where are these dollars being spent? How are we tracking that? And you know, the way that we've tracked it, is that the right way? Are there ways that we can continue to improve that tracking? For the city council, they're obviously looking a lot at the financial aspect of it and saying, okay, how much TOT is coming in? How much sales tax? All of that. And so the more information we get from you and the more information that the city can start tracking as well, the more information we'll all have together to share. So I would love to hear from you about metrics. What kind of metrics are you interested in as a business receiving maybe from the city? What kind of metrics can you capture that you can share? Um, and just that entire topic. We don't have any speaker slips, I don't believe. So topic is open for discussion. Please state your name and business. Julie Palladino, Renaissance Antiques. Um, I think it would be very useful to have information about what um, weddings and large events of that type are coming into Solvang so that we can market appropriately, um, include little favors or something like that and visitor packets. Um, we don't generally have any information about these groups in advance. And there's actually was one wedding that took place at the Alice Hall that was over a million dollars. And those people were in town for two or three days and 
we couldn't really reach out to them, but if we were a little advanced preparation, we could. Anybody else? Metrics? I'm Brenda Ball with the Solvang Visitor Center, and I just have one little piece of information that you might find useful. Um, I've heard a comment a lot that we have a lot of Chinese visitors coming to Solving. What we found in the visitor center, because we've been asking people where they're from, that about half of those people are not from China. They are California residents. They live in San Francisco, San Jose, Monterey, Los Angeles, and San Diego. Thanks, Brenda. It's a good example of where having actual metrics that we can measure, not just word of mouth, can make a big difference. All right, all right, we'll move on to the next topic. And because th this is the last workshop of the night, if you think of something, we, we can have time at the end for additional public comments. So ways to get involved. Again, this is just a first step. I think I mentioned earlier that Marissa has just started going around to businesses. Hopefully you have received an email from us already uh, or met Marissa and she will be reaching out to you shortly. If not, please see us after so we get your correct contact information. We also could use your help with your neighbors because a lot of times it's the ones that we keep showing up but they're not there or they're not responding to emails or they keep opening them but they're not responding. And sometimes those are actually the loudest of people who complain about things. So we want to make sure that if someone has an opinion, they have a chance to be heard and that they also get involved. So um, we can see great things moving forward and want to kind of give you a glimpse into ways that you can participate and ways that you can help the city too. So for instance, sharing our visitor survey, uh, that's kind of an easy to remember link, but if you go to cityofsolvang.com on that homepage, you'll find a link to the surveys and all three surveys are there, resident, business, and visitor. It would be amazing if each one of you tomorrow would go to your social media pages for your business and share that link. We want everybody, it doesn't matter if they've been to Solvang or not. If they haven't been to Solvang, they don't get a majority of the questions on that visitor survey. Um, um, because there's a lot of questions that are related to your visit here, but we still get some good helpful information. What, what would it take for them to come to Solving if they haven't? So please share that. That would mean so much for us. Uh, we do want to boost that. That's a little bit harder to get answers to. We are giving away two tickets to, um, actually is it four tickets total to the drone show? We're going to do two drawings. So if they answer, there's an incentive there. Uh, keeping your information current, um, you know, this is not my first time at the rodeo working with businesses and it can be really hard getting information from you because you're super busy. So we do want to make it easy for you. Hopefully, you know, starting off kind of reaching out to everyone at once, we'll get all of your information. But if you do have a change of ownership or management and therefore our contact has changed, please try to think of us. I know you've got a million more important things to do, but it will make a big difference in making sure that the website's updated and that when we have news, we can get that to you. Um, I have found that a lot of times people haven't heard about something, but they're also not checking the city website or the city social media. And part of that's because there's never been social media for the city before. So we have all of these new initiatives and ways to communicate, but if you didn't know they existed, you wouldn't know to check them. So you're here and that's fantastic. So if you could help me spread the word and let people know, I think it will go a really long way. And then lastly, um, Marissa can give you details after this if you have questions, but um, after we get all of your information, we'll start communicating regularly. I'm hoping we can start doing workshops and sessions and, and in-person meetings on a regular basis, maybe even quarterly. We'll have newsletters going out to you with information from the city as well as from the tourism side. But one of the things that we would love is if we send you a link to our CrowdRiff permissions page, you give us permission to use your Instagram um, photos and Facebook photos so that we can share those on our pages and perhaps even use them in other materials. And we will credit you. The whole point of this campaign, The Real Solving, is to include the handles there so that everyone gets credit. And if you have visitors or customers that take awesome pictures of your business, let us know. Um, there's quite a bit out there. So if you think it's beautiful, we probably do too. So send it, send it our way. And don't forget to tag, uh, hashtag the real solving if you're going that route um, and want us to see it for reposting. And as always, solving uh, CA is great. 
And we'll talk a little bit, a bit more about that too. Um, if you didn't go to the rebranding workshop, we do want to hear a little bit more from you about what name you like. In the survey, it does say this. Do you prefer Solvang USA, Solvang CA, Solvang California? Um, there's a few other options in the survey. But we do want to hear what your feedback is on that uh, because we've received a lot of feedback and we want to compare it with yours. What you can do, you can shop local. I mentioned this to the uh, residents, is that if you don't like certain businesses being here, don't shop there, but do shop at the businesses you do want to support. Same thing goes with other businesses. When you're buying holiday gifts on Amazon this year, just think about the fact that you want people to come to you and helping support your, your local businesses. I know it's a little preachy, but um, it's something I think we can all have reminders uh, about. Uh, speak up. So email city, uh, uh, sorry, council at cityofsolvang.com or you're wel welcome to email me, PIO at cityofsolvang.com. We compile all the feedback and soon, fingers crossed, we're going to be starting a CRM platform that automates that so that we really get accurate, true data. So again, we don't have people saying, oh, everybody thinks this or everybody thinks that. It's like, no, okay. 6% think this, 25% think this. So we're really getting true data that will be useful for you as well as for the city council when making decisions. City council meetings, second and fourth Monday of each month. Again, if you're not sure what's going on, hopefully you're checking out the uh, Department of Communications uh, page on the website. Hopefully you're following social media, but this is also a great way to be involved and speak your mind. And uh, again, you know, depending on the feedback from this, if you all hate it tonight, then maybe we won't do another one. But if you think there's potential for growth, then we can certainly talk about doing more um, sessions and workshops. Uh, advertise. So we are going to be working on an advertising revenue plan for the city council. Um, the city staff will be working on that. We would love your input. It doesn't have to be tonight. If you just want to reach out to us, marissa at solvangusa.com or pio at cityofsolvang.com. We would love to hear your ideas. Where do you want to put your marketing dollars? We already have a great reach. We're planning on increasing that quite a bit. So as that value becomes more important to you. So let's say we increase our followers to 50,000 followers on Facebook. Chances are you don't have that reach yourself. So is that valuable to you? Would you spend advertising dollars on that? Same thing with the website. Same thing with maybe visitor center advertising. We want to know what you want rather than just creating these opportunities and hoping that you'll advertise. Uh, we want to make it work for you. So please do send us that um, feedback as well as um, featuring your business. So the great thing about CrowdRef is when we utilize this user-generated content, if it features your business, we can add that and it populates. So it actually next to the photo when you click on it, like on the website, for instance, you click on that photo, it pops up and all of your business information is there. This is great for two reasons. As people look through different photos, they'll see all of your information without leaving the website, meaning that all of you win. However, they can leave the website because there's a button right there that takes you to that business's page. So lots of opportunities there, some advertising opportunities as well as just natural opportunities. So the more good content that you have out there, the more likely you're going to get extra exposure through our social media channels. And in general marketing, um, our, our ad for the visitor's guide for the San Inez Valley actually features all user-generated content this year. Uh, promote your events and deals. So that's another thing. If uh, that's valuable to you, we want to hear that. We can certainly have avenues to promote your deals and have that on a regular basis. But we want to make sure it's something you want and that we can really have follow through with. So if we did a deals program, would enough businesses give us those deals and then continue to give us those deals so we could keep that program running? And uh, staying informed, uh, again, make sure that you follow us on social media. At City of Solvang is great if you want to find out about kind of the logistical side of tourism and events, but of course at Solvang USA right now, and then the communications department, uh, cityofsolvang.com. I do post summaries of the city council meetings. I also do uh, the PIO verbal report presentations, which oftentimes uh, cover quite a bit about tourism. That will be on there. And it's a lot, so you don't have to sit through the whole video. You can just go to that page on the website and click on the presentation. 
And then lastly, just make sure um, you sign up for our business directory. And that is both to keep you informed as well as to promote you. All right, public comment. Anyone want to talk about ways to get involved or advertising or anything like that? Ooh, great. Hi, my name is Kyle. My husband Matt and I own Wonder Child. Um, we were lucky enough to move our shop from Buellton, where we were at for two years, to Solving here in July. So we might be the new kids on the block. But I just wanted to add a comment to what was going on tonight. I've grown up in this community my whole life. And it's very exciting to see a room full of people who are trying to reach out to the community itself. I think for us being a uh, mostly focused kid shop, I think a reminder that I would like to give everyone is not to forget about the families that are within the community. And as we're trying to come up with ways of how we can increase revenue and increase community support, there are a lot of families like us who have kids that would be willing to come into town if there were more opportunities to spend time with our kids here. And we would be willing to spend money in shops if they were willing to welcome us. Tracy Beard with Solving Chamber. I think you've done a great job tonight putting this together. At the same time, I think the timing is so off for us as a business community. On a 8.30 at night till we're almost 10 o'clock here, everybody has businesses to open. I'd like to see the 17th move till January because this is our busiest shopping week. I had 13 emails today of people that said they couldn't come because they had to get Yule Fest ready and it's been raining and they haven't been able to decorate outside for the last week. We've had a whole week of rain. We have to think about that too as we look at being the Christmas East town. This is not the best time to be doing these things, but I commend you on trying to get us all here. And we wanted to have that voice and we made sure people came out and we sent over 100 emails. Thank you for that. We really appreciate that. And as I think I mentioned, I, I'm, I apologize. I don't remember if it was this workshop or the previous. Um, we did want to make sure it happened to to prevent any gap in towards the marketing. But we want to do this again. We want to do it where more people can participate. We can get the word out sooner. We can be even more organized. So thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. But I do think you should look at not having it on the 17th. I truly do. Because this is our busiest week. Our vendors make 70% of their business going, you know, they're making 150% right now to carry them into January. We need to look at that because January is their slowest month, okay? Please. And I'll, I'll, I'll pass that on. Unfortunately, we can't change the date because it's a city council vote, so it's already been voted on, uh, but that doesn't mean there can't be more meetings about it. It's not a workshop, it's a city council meeting, right? A special meeting just about tourism. So taking all of this data from the uh, surveys as well as the workshops, bringing it to the council, and then they'll be discussing next steps forward. And again, next steps forwards are not does not mean that everything's set in stone. We want to continue these conversations. We want to continue getting feedback from you. We're just talking about immediate next steps forward. Uh, Jim Richardson. You know, I took that survey uh, online. I was one of the 200. Uh, but there's two points I'd like to make about it. Number one is you can go back to a previous page just by rolling up. Oh, great. So just by rolling up on the... And, and the number two thing was there was a question on there about raising revenue, i.e. Uh, possible paid parking. And I want to warn you that if you put paid parking in this town, that's the end of our town. Mm -hmm. People will be driving to Los Olivos, to Santa Ynez, and to Buellton and the casino before they'll stop here, no matter if the park paid parking is on the streets or in the parking lots. So it's absolutely essential that the council understand and know that paid parking will ruin this city and will ruin the revenues in this city rather than benefit the city. Thank you, that's great. That will definitely be passed along to the council. And that is, I believe, that's on the advanced calendar as well. So that's a very pertinent topic right now. Julie Palladino, Renaissance Antiques. I'd like to recommend that you, in addition to the visitor, um, business owner, and, and um, what's the third, um, the, the surveys, what was it? Business resident right. and um, the, the, the surveys. Visitor. I think that you need to do another survey for employees 
because they really have their pulse on the finger of the town and they, you know, there's probably five times, times as many employees as there are business owners and they interact with, with customers and visitors every day of the week and there's a lot of employees here in the room. Well, Eric, who was here as an employee, he's not a business owner and you can see he was totally passionate about and completely um, knowledgeable about what's happening in the town and his observations. So I think that when you have, um, I don't know if it's the chamber going around or the city who's going to approach the stores where they don't have all the email addresses to reach people, I think that a specific survey for employees would be very useful. And I would say I do encourage you to share it with your managers for your, your um businesses because they are going to be able to answer a lot of those questions in the survey as well as you. Um, I, I don't think we're quite at the point yet for an employee survey where every single employee uh, would be able to answer a lot of those questions, but we can certainly look into doing an employee survey soon. Right. In, in regard to the, the survey I received about our, our the questionnaire about the recent um, events, um, we were only we only received oh, one between. I don't believe that was from. So that would have been, was that from the chamber? That was then? not from us, yeah. Oh, okay. Because we were restricted to one response. Yeah, th that was not from us. Okay. So you're encouraged to share it with your employees. I would just caution maybe some, you know, somebody who doesn't know about tourism and marketing. Employees but know a lot about it. Yeah. And then please, please feel free to share the, this survey with them. Um, one way that I think that we could collect, if you could say your name real quick. Uh, yes, sure. this is Claudia Aurora from uh, Solvent Trolley and Ice Cream Parlor. Uh, one way that I think we could collect data is to make Wi-Fi available to everybody that comes into town. Um, this might backfire because I don't want the Wi-Fi to be available for my employees to do to use while they're working. But if Wi-Fi is available to every visitor, then uh, there's the technology available to use that to capture where they're coming and where they're going. And rather than trying to collect data from every single um, uh, business uh, just by them using their information to look into the Wi-Fi mm -hmm. we can collect those and use it for our own analytics so I think that's great. Be a great way thank you so much okay, any other ideas comments questions all right I think so next steps. Next steps, we had our workshops today. Thank you again for coming. Again, I know it's the holiday season, Yule Fest, it's been raining. So it means a lot that you came out. Um, as I mentioned, we did this because we didn't want to just do nothing. And we need your information. We need to start somewhere. So this is the first step. Um, we hope to have more. If you cannot attend the city council meeting on the 17th, that should not stop you from emailing council at cityofsolvane.com or myself, PIO at cityofsolvane.com. And requests for proposals. So depending on how the city council meeting goes on the 17th, um, should they decide to move forward with any RFPs, that would happen soon after uh, to keep the ball rolling. Again, that will all be discussed on the 17th and determined at that time. Please follow us. City of Solvang, Solvang USA, and Yule Fest Solvang. And just because I know you all understand marketing really well, um, I did want to explain that we are in the process of merging multiple pages. We did have two Yule Fest pages, which is super confusing, uh, waiting for Facebook to approve that. Um, so right now there's a Yule Fest Solvang on Facebook that's Yule Fest Space Solvang and one that's Yule Fest Solvang, all one word. And Facebook requires that in order to merge. Please go to the one that says Yule Fest Space Solvang for the most accurate information and hopefully soon we will have that all on one page. Um, and I believe there's a couple of small Solvang pages that have kind of been created that haven't been used in a while that we're trying to merge into Solvang USA as well. Please follow us on all of those and share. And we really appreciate it, especially on your personal pages. We do want to make sure there's over 5,000 residents here. We want to make sure the residents know about City of Solvang as well as the business owners. So please do share with your friends. And let's just keep working together. Here's all of our contact information. Reach out anytime. Again, if you go to City of Solvang and go to the Department of Communications page, you should find a lot of what you need there. If something's missing, let us know. We are in the process of getting a new website for tourism, and we hope to begin that process for a new city website too. Uh, but it does need a lot of work, and uh, we know that, and we're, we're moving forward as fast as we can. So thank you again. Have a good one. <laughs>